You bring your phone everywhere. Work, school, shh, the movies. Now you can bring it to an Xfinity store for an easy way to switch to Xfinity Mobile, a new kind of network designed to save you money. You can get up to five lines of talk and text included with Xfinity Internet at no extra cost, so all you pay for is data. It's never been easier to switch to Xfinity Mobile and keep the phone you love. Click here to see how. Sorry, I gotta take this. Restrictions apply. Limited to select mobile phones. Requires activation of a new line of Xfinity Mobile. Up to five devices per account. New Xfinity Internet customers limited to up to two lines pending activation of Internet service. And she's like, I've seen him before. He was in Usual Suspects. I was sure he was Kaiser Soze the whole time. I, <laughs> yeah. She's like, yeah, I've had sex dreams about him my whole life. And he's like, oh, um, awkward. <laughs> <laughs> Starting at what age have you had <laughs> sex dreams about him? Uh, I feel like there's like one or two viewers who are way more interested now. <laughs> God awful movie 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema because our career aptitude tests in school had some really weird results. I'm your host, Noah Lusions, and sitting to my immediate left is my good friend, Heath Enright. Heath, welcome back. Thanks, Noah. You know what I find sexually stimulating? <laughs> what, what do you find sexually stimulating, sir? Well, no, I'm really asking. Like, How well do you guys know me? I'm curious. Bacon. Oh, wow. You know me quite well. All right. <laughs> well, I learned a new answer to that question this week, and it's movies with Kevin Pollack and Arnold Schwarzenegger. Huh. So cool. All and right, bacon, Dad. Obviously. There you go. And sitting 81 miles to my right is my bad friend, Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? Ah, 10 episodes left, guys. It's been a long road. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> memories. You know what, it's Eli? Been a long... Don't tempt me today, man. <laughs> Don't tempt me. <laughs> it's been a rough week. So tell us, Heath, what will we be breaking down today? All right. We watched End of Days. It's that classic story about a drunk atheist trying to stop an evil demon from committing sexual assault and causing the end of the world. So kind of like Election Day for me last year. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of fun. And Eli, how bad was this movie? Well... If you love Antichrist action comedies, but you hate the lack of boobs, you <laughs> will love this movie. I feel like this movie needed more boobs. I feel like it was it was a couple of boobs shy of a good film. But it is a bit of a weird selection for us because, I mean, yeah, technically it's a Christian movie, but there's boobs and explosions and shit. Mm. Yeah, but as we will learn throughout this review, there are a lot of the hits on the bingo card. I mean, this firmly falls into Christian movie category. If this had had less boobs than David R. White, this would be canon. Yeah, this no, you're right. Canon. You're right, exactly. I had a little checklist beside me as I went through this movie, like a check for, oh, no, this is an Arnie movie. Nope, this is a Christian movie. No, Arnie movie. Oh, Arnie movie's ahead. Um, yeah, yeah. Who won? Did Christian movie win? Yeah, Christian movie ultimately did take wow, it at the yeah, very, very end. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. yeah. flip it. So, uh, and now I want to point out that this is not exactly the high point of Arnold's career. No? So I want to give you, there, there's a, the four movies leading up to this one have to represent one of the worst like chunks of a filmography of all time. Okay. So in order, in chron chronological order, the five uh, the four movies leading up to this junior, the movie so bad that how did this get made? Used it as their cover art, <laughs> followed by eraser jingle all the way <laughs> and legitimate contender for worst movie of all time. Batman and Robin. And then this. And then this. Wow. Holy, you can see why he went into politics at this point. Uh, now, is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Uh, yeah, I'm going to say best worst choice of two people to have a fight scene. <laughs> and, and if you're thinking, does Arnold Schwarzenegger fight Kathy Bates in this movie? <laughs> The answer is basically yes. That's what it looks like happens in this movie. Well, and I also feel like it takes second and third in that category as well, but we'll get to it. Uh, Eli, got any mm -hmm. best worsts? 
Uh, yeah. Can I go with best, worst, inconsistent devil healing? Uh, spoiler <laughs> alert. The devil has about the same healing factor as Wolverine in this movie, but it is very inconsistent. Sometimes. It is yeah, very, right. Occasionally. Very, very inconsistent. <laughs> See, I was going to go with best worst shooting New York as though it were the slums of Eritrea. Okay, like (laughs) throughout this whole fucking movie, it it all takes place in Manhattan. And yet, like every time you turn around, they're in some slummy ass third world bar with some fucking alleyway leading out to it with like fucking some vulture worshippers next to it. It's, it's, It's really bizarre. All right, well, obviously we're just doing this one so Eli can do his Arnold voice, and we're not going to make you wait for that too much longer. We're going to pause for a quick break, but we'll be back. Huh. <laughs> yeah, I did the, I did the tagline. tagline. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, welcome to Generic Drugstore. How can I help you? Yeah, I, I've been wandering around for like 30 minutes looking for someone. Are, are you the only person who works here? No, there are like 38 employees, but most of them just... Unload boxes of formula constantly like some kind of weird afterlife punishment. Okay. I mean, that seems like a really easily fixable, poor use of workforce. Couldn't you guys just like some of you help? Yeah, you'd think, right? So how can I help you? Would you like me to slowly pass your items over a laser in a way that we're um, all now aware can be done without me? Okay. No, no, um, not yet. Anyway, I'm actually looking for some razors. Oh, so you signed up for Dollar Shave Club? Uh, Not this again. Okay, what's Dollar Shave Club? It's the smarter choice. Get a great shave at a great price, conveniently delivered right to your door. For a limited time, new members get their first month of the Executive Razor with a tube of their Dr. Carver Shave Butter for only $5 with free shipping. After that, razors are just a few bucks a month. That's a $15 value for only 5 bucks. Okay, how much are razors here? Oh, okay. Uh, well, we have two options. Okay. Um, I got a nameless bag of 84 razors that don't work. Well, why would you sell those? How is that one of the... Op- what? That's a good question. Or you could buy the Speed Fusion Hyperdrive Omega with 983 blades, none of which point at your face, for the low, low price of a college education. <sighs> okay. What kind of razors does Dollar Shave Club have? Oh, that's a good question. In your first month box, you get an awesome weighty handle, a full cassette of four cartridges, and a tube of their shave butter. Wait, they include shave butter? Yeah. Do you guys do that? No, but we'll sell you the white foam stuff that hasn't changed since 1940. Okay, uh, but what about after the first month? Then what happens? Uh, For Dollar Shave Club, after your first month, replacement cartridges ship automatically at their regular price. No hidden fees, no commitments. Cancel anytime you like. And here? Uh, you could come back and you and I would wander around for 58 minutes looking for someone who has a key to the weirdly locked cabinet of replacement cartridges. Yeah, I see. Uh, I think I'm going to go with Dollar Shave Club. Yeah, sounds like a good choice. But you can only get this offer exclusively at dollarshaveclub.com slash godawful. That's dollarshaveclub.com slash godawful. Thanks. I'm three months away from losing my job to a robot. You sure are. Aren't we all? Hey, kids. Do you love Thai food? Do you love breakfast? Well, introducing Thai food for breakfast. It's the crunch of milk and cereal with the delicious taste of Thai, a part of this balanced breakfast. What the what the hell is this? What does this have to do with the movie? E- Eli, you don't get to write interstitials anymore. I'm sorry. I don't know. I liked it. Well, you would eat Thai, thai food, food for breakfast? breakfast? That sounds delightful. Two votes. Good afternoon, Mr. Schwarzenegger. Really happy to have you on board for this film. Happy to be here. Yeah, no, you were our third choice. All right, so uh, what we're going for here is like a like an actiony version of The Exorcist, but with some of that classic pithy Arnold wit. Sounds great. Now we've lined up a bunch of really tough stunt actors for you to fight in it. Oh, um, I'm not as young as I used to be, and I just had heart surgery. Can we maybe downgrade the stunt performers a little bit? What do you mean? Um, I'm just not really up to fighting people my own size anymore. Well, okay, what did, what did you have in mind? Uh, 
an old fat lady, maybe? Yeah, see, I don't feel like that would be appropriate in this. And, uh, sorry to interrupt. I, I'm not talking about a chubby lady. I'm looking for, like, perfectly round, like a sphere. I mean, I, I guess we could do that. And, like, a, a frail old priest. Um, Maybe. And a seven-year-old with cancer. Okay, I, I'm going to have to put my foot down on that one. Oh, no, 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 no. That last one wasn't for the movie. What, what, what are you talking about, Arnold? Never mind. Do you have a maid service here? <laughs> and we're back for the breakdown, and we're going to start this movie off reflecting on the fact that religious iconography is the same as horror movie iconography. That kind of tells us something, <laughs> doesn't it? Yeah. The, the amazing thing about the opening credits of this movie is it is just the entirely normal holy objects of this religion, plus some slightly scary music, which wouldn't work for, like, Reason Con. You couldn't have yeah. footage of Reason Con and, like, <laughs> yeah. and be like, oh, it's a horror movie. It <laughs> I mean, maybe not Reason Con, but, like... Oh, yeah, right, but a normal, like... <laughs> Yeah, no, we could, we could, I'm, I'm sure we could scare Christians with photos from a recent con. Somewhere in the north. Yeah. So, okay, so we get this weird opening thing with a bunch of religious nonsense and weird random language. Did anybody else notice that the Hebrew was upside down when they showed it? They couldn't find <laughs> a Jew to ask, hey, is this the right way up? Um, there was a fetus in there somewhere. But the most disturbing thing I thought about these credits were um, the fact that Gabriel Burns in this movie. Oh, and Kevin yeah. Pollack. Those are real. Act are we sure about this? Oh, are we going to do this? There's a lot of stuff just in the credits that says this movie is way too good for this podcast. The music, the actors, it's, I don't know. <sighs> Arnold Schwarzenegger? Well, the other other <laughs> actors, yeah. I'm Hector about Salamanca? <laughs> also, yeah, <that's> right. <laughs> also I, are those, there's, a, there's an image in there that I don't quite get. It's like like Zale's eggs from the quarter clucker because something will fall and it'll break and a little ring will pop out. <laughs> the, you mean the grapes? Yeah, the yeah. shattering grapes yeah. from a necklace? What was it? Did I you thought say those were rosary beads. Yeah, but they explode when they contact the ground. Is that a common <laughs> rosary bead function? Yes. I don't, okay. yes. <laughs> you remember those little snappers you had as a kid, those white ones? They came yeah. in a pack with a wolf on the package. Rosary beads. Not a lot of people oh, know that. All right. Huh. Catholicism is way cooler than I thought. <laughs> What's did you say quarter clucker? What, yeah, you what, know, the, you put the, in the quarter and it goes bark, 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 and then it drops out of the thing and you what? open the egg and there's a prize in it. I'm old. What? That's <laughs> the thing is that I'm old. That's what we had instead of video that? games when I was a kid. What the fuck was that? quarter clucker? Once yeah, every like, 12 episodes, <laughs> Noah's like, you know, when you're beating your slave and he dies and you got to go see one of the high tribunal. And it's just a fucking 19 hour wait with these assholes. <laughs> Moving on. All right. So we go to we go to Vatican City in a year when only I was there. Also, I love it opens it up. It says Vatican City, comma, Rome. I'm like. Vatican City, so not really a country that it has the name of the city it's in after the yeah. comma. <laughs> also, a uh, fun little Latin fact here. The scroll the guy is reading says end of days. And I was like, is that is that the ancient Latin script for the movie? <laughs> <laughs> well, also, he keeps his um, his secret scrolls in a stainless steel thermos or two. In TGI Friday's collector shaker tins. Oh, sure. I thought he was about to make like an word. ultimate margarita. No, but there's <laughs> scrolls. He's going to read scrolls on these things like as fast as he can because it's like an emergency. Yeah. I feel like just put those in a Word document. Right? This is 1999. Like you could fire through that. Scan that shit. Yeah. And then he runs into the room with the Pope in the least appropriate way <laughs> possible <laughs> to run into the room with the Pope to tell him about As Satan's As though there was like a scotch thing on the way. Yeah. And he's like, oh, fuck, I got to go one foot, one foot, two foot, one foot. Okay. Right, the, right. the crab walk and the serpentine. And like, what the fuck's happening? He merrily skips into the room. Just like, la, 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 la. Anyway, Satan is going to impregnate a lady. Yeah. So, and that's what? what I can't have fun at work. <laughs> And that's when we learn, okay, so there's a smudge over the moon, and that means that this on this day, the child will be born that will eventually also bear a child that will be the Antichrist. Anyway, so the Pope's sitting there, and he's got a couple of English-speaking Catholics with him, too, who suggest that they find the baby and murder it. <laughs> 
Right. This is so good. She's supposed to give birth to the Antichrist, right? Well, th- this person is going to give birth to the person who's going to give birth to the Antichrist. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. Satanism is amazing. Even cardinals are pro-choice when it comes to Satan stuff. <laughs> I love it. They really, they're like, yeah, we're going to kill the baby, right? Yeah. And of course, the Pope's yeah, like, but- murder a baby before we even fucked it? Come on. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I-, I wrote my, he was like, I wrote my notes. Hey, guys, we don't kill people. And I'm like, hey, man, you are not familiar with the work of other popes. <laughs> right. <laughs> that is a very, very new opinion among popes. <laughs> and, and then we're off to New York City where the evil devil baby is being born. It's fantastic. The baby is enormous, right? Is the baby way too big? Yeah, when they, they lift it out and it's 95 it's, years old. It's, right? <laughs> Smoking a cigar. <laughs> my 401k is shit. It's shit. <laughs> I'm a baby because I'm slimy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's covered in oatmeal or something. It didn't didn't look good. And this is when a nurse is like, "All right, hospital rules. I get your baby right now." You're like very clearly, gonna steal this this baby. And the mom's like, uh, "Don't steal my baby." <laughs> There's what? like, right, I'm gonna count to three. One, two. Fine. Stop. Steal my baby. <laughs> All right. So yeah, Hospital policy. So this chubby little nurse grabs the uh, the baby and she goes to the elevator. And I love this too because they panned over to the elevator light, like that down elevator light button, as though they're like, "Oh, she's taking that baby to hell," which is exactly what they're going for. So she gets to the basement morgue where they have some professional baby sacrificers waiting. Yeah, right. Well, baby Satanizers. Yeah, right. I thought that these were the people with the Vatican that were going to kill the baby. But no, these are the Satanists that are preparing her to bear the devil's child by slitting a rattlesnake open and giving her some of its blood. Oh, it's this movie is fantastic. I love it. You guys have erections. You do. (laughs) Eli, what's the name for this fetish? Do they have like a website or like a... I (laughs) searched everywhere and people just kept calling police when I posted on message board. So (laughs) I don't know what to tell you. Also, I love that they like before they kill the snake and give the baby the blood, they check to make sure that the baby has a sweet tribal tattoo. They're like, wait, wait, wait. Did this baby go to Coachella? Yeah, this baby went to Coachella. Okay. <laughs> Kill the snake and feed it some blood. Yeah. Yeah. And when she brings the baby back, she's like, here's the baby. And I wanted the mom to be like, you didn't feed her snake blood, right? Because that's a pre existing condition. And I will not deal with that shit. <laughs> I will ash box this motherfucker right now. We're not going to get Obamacare for years, guys. This is 1999. Well, 79 at this point. And then we skip to 20 years later. Couple days before Y2K wiped us out. Remember that? We all stopped existing. <laughs> oh, God. I remember Y2K. I was studying for my bar mitzvah, and my mom, like three minutes before the timer went down, decided she wanted to fill the tub with water. That was her oh, preparing. Gosh. She was just like three <laughs> minutes before midnight. She was like, David, fill the tub with water. And my dad looked at me like, don't do a thing. And so we just filled the tub with water. And then the year 2000 came and we were all fine. And she was like, you can train the tub now. And I was like, Good. <laughs> all right. So why did people think like the world was going to explode? Why do you, like, why would anyone program a nuclear weapon to fire on January 1st, 1900? Why would that be written into any code anywhere? Uh, to fight the past that had obviously come to the future to take our gold and resources. I feel like idiot. In, in 1999, as I recall, we were all just kind of hoping it was going to end. We were pretty much ready to check out at that point. So I don't think we needed logical reasons. So now, we, okay, so we got the, the radio station plan and the guy says, it's just three days until New Year's Eve in Times Square. Where will you be? And I'm like, you're talking to New Yorkers, bro. So Not time fucking square. Yeah. Yeah. Anywhere but that, except for the one year you try it and then you hate it. And you're like, oh, God, why did I do that? Uh, People are like, hey, have you ever done it? And you're like, yeah, I did it once. It's the worst. It's the worst. I peed myself. You peed yourself? Yeah. You want to walk through a 19 minute crowd? No. Well, no. (laughs) You You pee yourself. (laughs) (laughs) So I got to say, some of us can figure out that I would not be. Uh, happy shoulder to shoulder with a bunch of strangers for several hours in a crowd oh that I God. can't get out of in January oh in New God. York City. <laughs> yes, Patreon goal. Patreon, goal. please, <laughs> please, please. Because that is something if we raised enough money, Noah would commit himself to doing and it would be known as the New Year's Eve massacre. <laughs> Come on. Well, I, we, I, yes. I could end New Year's Eve in Times Square. I could put that to an end altogether. <laughs> Just sitting there by himself. 
<laughs> bunch of streamers on the ground. <laughs> One. <laughs> I have a temper. Um, so now we cut to a couple of con ad workers that notice something's weird. It's almost like there's a portal to hell down there or something. And then there's an earthquake and explosion because it's an Arnold movie. It really is an Arnold movie. So it sure is. Which releases the devil from hell. Because he's under right? the subway. Why? Yeah. Why was the devil in the sewer? Just like <laughs> flying from the side. Why would you go through there? I don't understand. Have you ridden the New York subway? Like, this was the most realistic thing about the movie. Like, if, we, if the news came on today and was like, hey, devil's down there, I'd be like, sure. That explains smelly, half empty cars. I get it. The devil's <laughs> down there. <laughs> When he rose out of the sewer, I wrote in my notes, see, this is what happens. You buy your kid a baby Satan, and then you flush it down the toilet when it's not <laughs> cute anymore. I also love, too, that this just so happened that, uh, happens to happen on one of those streets in Manhattan that only has two people on it at any point. <laughs> yeah. Give me a fucking break. So, yeah, so cheesy demon. And it's basically, it's the predator graphics, right? That flies out. The he, sort of it sure semi is. It sure is. Yeah, back when... The shit we saw in Divination was cutting edge graphics. Um, so the devil first goes sightseeing around Midtown. I wanted him to do a fashion montage <laughs> so badly. And just like the devil goes into a store with his arms full of bags. Big mistake. Huge. Uh-uh. So now we meet Gabriel Byrne and he's meeting a couple for dinner and Basically, he comes into the restaurant, sits down, says, hey, I got to sit here for a second or they won't let me use their bathroom. So you guys act like you're with me. And then he goes to the <laughs> bathroom. And of course, Predator Demon follows him in. And I'm like, this is why they need those laws in North Carolina, y'all, because this clearly this demon is going to sexually assault him and does. And I'm thinking, OK, yeah. movie, let's see where you go with this. <laughs> demon following Gabriel Byrne into a bathroom. You're crushing it so far. So yeah. here he goes. Well, the demon beats the shit out of Gabriel Byrne and takes his body. Seems like an odd choice of right before you take someone's well, body, yeah, right? Why beat him up and just possess him right away? That's your body now. Yeah. <laughs> One of the demons to like fly back out, just coughing and wheezing like, fuck, fuck, that was stupid. I should, I should have watched the whole training video. You, do, you don't <laughs> choke the guy before oh, shit, you possess man. him. I just thought that one on fucking wet floor science was so stupid. I was like, I know that shit. So I didn't figure I had to watch all of them. <laughs> so, yeah. So the demon fucks his way into Gabriel Byrne. And so he comes out of the bathroom all deviled up and immediately he walks up to the stepmom and all the pornos and grabs her by the tit and starts making out with her. Yeah. And the guy at the table who I assume is her husband is like, hey, but, but then like he glares at him and he's like, all right, fine. If you're going to be all glary, <laughs> don't don't be glary. Nobody, yeah. Nobody's been rude yet. <laughs> Except for you. <laughs> yeah, he gets totally Jason Bourne. He might as well go like stand in the corner and masturbate. Yeah, that's what I did. Um, <laughs> so when Gabriel Byrne came and grabbed my wife's Ted, I mean, um, not in the movie and not yet in the movie. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm confusing everything. Let's just move on. So <laughs> Gabriel Byrne makes out with his chick and then walks out of the restaurant and he's like three inches out and the whole restaurant just explodes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and that is the first but not the last time I wrote. I love this movie in my notes. Because here's the thing. This movie is not a good movie. No. But it's not not fun to watch. <laughs> Every mo you're just the movie knows it's like, hey, it's 19, whatever. You're probably pretty high right now. <laughs> <That's okay. laughs> I also love too, and this is the most realistic <laughs> moment in the whole movie to me. This whole restaurant just explodes. There's a couple of cabs driving down the road. They just sort of weave out of the way of the explosion and keep going. Well, like, yeah, okay, no, but that's but that's real though. That's real. There will be several very realistic moments in this movie where like something demonic happens in front of New Yorkers, and they're like, "I don't have time. I I just don't have time. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's not that I'm, I'm callous. Sorry. It's that I'm in a hurry. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just drop me off. I'm gonna take a city bike. I don't fucking care. Just, Jesus Christ, <laughs> it's a fireball, man. Relax. Bullshit. So now it's time to check on Arnie. First, we get the radio talking about like the the world is ending because of Y two K or whatever. And then we move to Arnold's apartment, which is all guns and cigar butts. And I thought, I bet they just filmed this in his actual apartment. You know, he's, he's, in, in, the, in the movie, he's about to shoot himself. I'm like, I bet that's what he was doing when they brought in the camera. He's like, why did I do hey, Batman Arnie? and Robin? <laughs> why? I read the script. <laughs> I knew I was going to I'm say it's going to be person. a breeze. <laughs> 
But luckily for Artie, uh, Todd Hockney is, is shows up. So Todd Hockney, Gabriel, Burr, it's like it's like a fucking it's like a reunion movie. Literally, all I call him throughout this movie is the usual suspects guy. Well, you can't because Gabriel Burns <laughs> was also in that. So I had to call him Todd Hockney. And also, I don't think they ever name the fucking character. Do they? Uh, I believe it's Bobby Chicago. What? Pretty Fuck sure it's off. something. Yep. Pretty sure it's Bobby <laughs> Chicago. That's almost as dumb as the name it's, they gave Arnie's it's character. It's Kevin Pollack. He will be Kevin Pollack. <laughs> I'll call him Todd anyway. Hockney. He will always be Todd <laughs> Hockney to me. Um, so so he comes in right before Arnold can shoot himself, and he's like, oh, God damn it! I guess I have to go to work now. So we get that. You know that hilarious bit that they used to do in Scooby-Doo when you'd go, nobody would eat that. Well, luckily, that bit is still super fresh in 1999. Jesus, it's like 20 minutes long. He makes a... Pepto coffee beer Chinese food old pizza smoothie or what we call the Heath. Uh, and it's, <laughs> <laughs> but they play the comedy of the, again. That's a three beat. It's like <laughs> Pepto coffee beer <laughs> Ch- Chinese food <laughs> <laughs> old, <laughs> old pizza. <laughs> Whatever. These are all Hats. good things. You guys don't like those things? You throw in like another shake for lunch and a sensible dinner. That's a good diet. Whatever. <laughs> so, yeah. So now I guess and what we're supposed to learn other than the fact that Artie is su- suicidal in this scene is that they are private security guards protecting a rich Wall Street guy. Uh, so it's it, they're off to do that. And apparently the security team that they work for fucking rivals norad <laughs> yeah, they've got a helicopter they've got a bunch of limos and not only this when they're done protecting you they'll investigate if anyone ever tries to attack you apparently <laughs> just like cops <laughs> well they also have this like 73 man fucking like like we're sending someone to the moon control center or whatever so yeah so they're bringing uh the the big wall street guy who is gabriel burns by the way to work and, you know, Arnold has to yell security words in, into a radio because that's in his riders. So he, he says to the guy in the helicopter that's following above him, he's like, uh, the, the helicopter says, rooftops are clear. And Arnie says, keep them clear. I wanted the helicopter guy to come back and go, yeah, you know, anybody comes up, I'll just decapitate him with my rotor blade, bro. What the <laughs> fuck are you talking? No, I'll shoot him dead. If anybody walks out on the fucking fire escape, I'll just shoot him just in case. Jesus. Oh, man, is there a helicopter out there? Blam! (laughs) Honestly, I don't feel at fault for this. I feel like the curiosity had a helicopter this close to my window. We're keeping it clear up here. Tell your friends. Don't. That's why I shot you in the shoulder. (laughs) So, yeah. So, but of course, the the roofs aren't clear because a sniper, I'm sorry, a shooter shows up. (laughs) Yeah. But his high power, I don't get that. They have R's in German, don't they? His name isn't going, right? <laughs> his name wasn't Hitler. Anyway, so, yeah, so they- I they, wish it was. <laughs> that would be sounds like someone making fun of him on the school year. Oh, look, it's Hitler. <laughs> Stop it, guys. It's Hitler. Hitler with an R. <laughs> we have R's. <laughs> Call forward. <laughs> so- so uh, so they they fire the the sniper fires at Gabriel Burns but Arnie jumps in the way and takes two shots in the chest don't worry though high powered sniper rifle is no match for his Kevlar vest I'm sure yep and then Arnold like asks he wants to you know follow the shooter which means he's going to need to take the helicopter up <laughs> right the helicopter's going to have to descend in the middle of Manhattan and then pick him up and I could climb the building king kong style faster than they do this but they, they go after the shooter. And that's pretty fucking impressive for a helicopter to lower itself on a New York City street without hitting anything just above a car so Arnie can climb up it. Because 30 seconds from now, it will not be able to lower itself near a roof. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, exactly. So instead, we get the 40-foot zip line of doom or whatever. Arnold, like, drops out of the fucking thing like the bait on a fishing line. And they have to, like... The helicopter has to go along the roof so he can grab the guy. But yeah, he doesn't like yeah, like a crane machine. Yes. He doesn't like rappel down and just, you know, land on the roof and go run after this old man and tack. He's like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I could just like easily grab him like that. But should we maybe just drag me on the rope with the helicopter thing? <laughs> and that would be better. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah helicopter. Because we brought the helicopter. I feel like we'd be wasting our helicopter <laughs> thing. 
<laughs> so they do exactly that. But the guy, the sniper, you know, he's going to he's running towards the roof and he's just going to jump off to his own death. But luckily or unluckily, whatever, Arnie catches him by the scruff of the collar just as he jumps off the roof. And you know how your shirt connects to all the parts of your body so that when someone grabs your shirt, it holds you up. Yes. It's like that. It's just like that. It's like reflexology, but with a shirt. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> that's a great analogy. <laughs> um, so but the but the shooter escapes in a way that I honestly cannot describe in words. Sorry. Well, there was that newspaper. He falls all the mm -hmm. way to the ground, like 30 stories. But there was a newspaper. I don't know if you saw. There was like oh. a, an entire, like a thick newspaper right there on the ground. Right, like a Sunday edition Cushioned type him. thing. I got yeah. you. Okay, all right. Well, yeah. that makes so sense. So he is then. Vin Diesel levels of fine immediately. <laughs> He's just like, oh, you see, I went through an awning, man. That was like, that must have totally, yes. I'm fine. <laughs> but the shooter escapes into one of those, um, you, you know how New York has all those shut down subway systems that you can just push open a gate and be inside of? He, he goes into one of those. Why does everybody think New York has like a labyrinth of those with like a minotaur and you can just go there whenever you want? <laughs> That's not a thing. Nope. So, so Arnold chases him down into the subway tunnel. The guy yells some evil religion words, says the thousand years have ended. And then Arnold's like, fuck this and shoots him dead. And he finds out that he was a priest, right? He starts looking through the guy's got a white collar on. Well, not dead. He shoots him in the knee. Oh, does he? I thought the guy was killed. Oh, oh no, no, you're yeah, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, he's 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 alive in the hospital later. You're right. So he shoots him, and then we get this, the first of many, like, the cops now showing up to the crime scene scenes. And being totally fine with this private citizen being like, I did some police work, and then being like, oh, yeah, man, you shot a gun at another person in the middle of New York City? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. That's fine. No, we're good with that, apparently. Do you want to swap <laughs> evidence? <laughs> So, and this is also where we're going to meet Marge, the, um, the the lady investigator cop that will be pivotal to the film, sort of, as much as anything's pivotal to yeah. this film. And black female lead detective. That's progressive. I mean, this is like the NYPD in 1999. I mean, she did get stopped and frisked on her way in by the other cops. She's like, no, I'm your boss. And they're like, yeah, but we're still checking. Yeah, just to be just, safe. You know, please turn around. <laughs> Put your hands above your head. Just a second. So and, and OK, so she and she comes up to Arnold. And she's like, wait a minute. Your statement doesn't make any sense. You said this guy said some religious words in the thousand years vented, but he doesn't have a tongue. Da, 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 da. And Arnold is really upset, apparently, that the police are investigating a private citizen murdering a homeless priest in a dark subway station. Yeah, his reaction to this is. To fight the black lady cop. He's like, oh, we'll fucking kill you. And Kevin Pollock's like, no, 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 no. You're going to fight a series of ridiculous things. But a woman, a woman's a little later in the movie. Yeah, not this lady. A much older and in worse shape lady. You had a heart attack. We need to, we need to dumb it down for you. Also, are there any one syllable words in Arnie's vocabulary? You know, like like he's going. He says the word now, and it has three syllables in it. It's amazing. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, but of course, luckily, he has the cardboard square that says "clue" on it. So they follow the matchbook <laughs> to the bar. Yeah, which is a good idea. I mean, you cannot solve a crime in New York City without a bartender with crazy amounts of detail. That, <laughs> I've seen Law and Order. That's how you. This is no, how you right. solve everything. You're right. Every crime. Just Heath wiping a smudgy glass with an even smudgier rag. Oh, yeah. That guy lives at 2214 Riverside Drive and uh, on the fourth floor. Yes. And I uh, believe his combination lock is 221719. Yes. <laughs> yeah, so you were, uh, you were a New York bartender for quite a while there. Heath, how many of your regular customers did you know the addresses of exactly? I mean, ge generally, I, I had to, you know, bring them there. At the end of nights, that was standard. Okay, because yeah. that's sure how they explain it. So yeah, so they find out where the priest lives, and his apartment is in Malawi. First of all, like yeah. th he's got this weird basement apartment that apparently where the ceiling leaks, even if it's not raining. Yeah, they don't, it, it, and they, they they don't turn on the lights. They go go through it with flashlights because that's creepier, I guess. Yeah, it's somehow dusty and cobwebby at the same time. Yeah, so they come across a jar. Where apparently this 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 priest guy kept his tongue, and also he kept the tongue cutting shears close by. Would you waste a jar at that point? He's I feel just, like this guy needs throw jars. It away. Yeah, right. Keeps everything. It's a weird Pinterest project. <laughs> I gotta say, <laughs> right. 
So, and then Hogney opens the fridge and jump scare, there's a cat in it. Well, why wouldn't the cat be dead? Who, how, how, could you, how could you keep a cat in a fridge? Anyway. I think the cat closed himself in the fridge like he heard them coming and he'd been squatting and he was like oh shit you know what i don't i don't want to make it awkward and ah look at my butthole all right great i'm gonna get out of here but once they get- <laughs> don't touch my stuff <laughs> but once everything i've pissed on in here is mine so but once they get past this the creepy cat in the fridge thing they find a a picture of a woman in a jar in the fridge okay why in the story and why in the movie would you have a picture of a person in a jar in the fridge? Okay, I mean, moving I keep on. Pictures I... of all the most important people <laughs> in my life in a jar in my fridge. How else will people know how much they matter to me? <laughs> I guess that's <laughs> it. Or maybe you ran out of magnets or something. I don't know. So, and then, like, very briefly, we got a shot of the girl who was in that picture putting flowers on a grave, roses roses on a grave because those are the flowers you're supposed to bring people. Yeah, when they're roses. dead, it really doesn't matter. They don't care. They can't have taste anymore. Yeah, some people like roses. Other people like other... Yeah, yeah. Um, and then we... Uh, <laughs> and that's all we're going to get of her for the time being. Now it's back to Arnie and, and Hockney checking out the uh, the apartment again. And just then the cops bust in. <laughs> they show up so aggressively for no reason. Just screaming like, let's not have a gunfight! Like, but with guns out, yeah. <laughs> Might sound like a good idea, like conception. That's the opposite of how to avoid gunfights. I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah, no, and, and again, like, okay, these cops are going into what they believe is the apartment of a man who they know is in the hospital. Why would they go in guns drawn in the first place? Anyway, also, and they have they give this no fucking reason at all, but the guy, the, the priest guy that Arnold shot, his name is Thomas Aquinas. Yeah, there's really subtle names in this movie. Yeah, really right. subtle names. It's such a cokey choice. Like, it's just such a 90s, like, and you know what? What if we name the priest Thomas Aquinas? Oh, dude. <laughs> subtle. <laughs> subtle. <Yes. laughs> this is the time period where everyone is dressed like we got caught in a time machine. <laughs> Did you call your guy? No, it actually was that <laughs> far back then. We're going to need another one <laughs> back then. Anyway, so, yeah. And now we're on the subway and we get the least realistic moment in this movie, right? Because it's the, the, the chick, Christine is the character's name. She gets into the subway and she finds an open seat. And that is bullshit. Come on, really? Really? <laughs> in Manhattan? I mean, I get it like where the train starts or something, maybe, a but that's total bullshit. No, this is like a three train in Midtown not happening. Yeah, no. I had a nice moment, though, remembering when the subway was, like, gross and dangerous. Like, it's still gross, but it also used to just be, like, filled with knives, like, sentient knives that wanted to steal <laughs> you to make more knives. But then a hero came along. Bernie Getz. Oh, jeez. Bernie Getz, <laughs> Luckily, that joke is not too far because nobody knows who the fuck Bernie Getz was. And if they Google it, they're going to be like, I don't know, some guy stopped some muggers. No, that's not well, what that story is about. No, that's not what that story That's not what happened. About. <laughs> that guy waited until black people checked the time around him and shot them. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, and now, again, super unrealistic. Okay, so this weird albino guy with white dreadlocks, tiny little mini dreadlocks comes up to her and just starts staring at her. And I'm, at first I'm going like, boy, I've seen this exact interaction on the subway before. And and the the dreadlock guy goes starts going like he's coming for you, Christine. He's gonna fuck you, Christine. And then he breaks apart like glass. And I'm like, okay, I, I, I that would not be the weirdest thing I've seen on a subway though. Oh, I, mean, I haven't exactly seen that exactly. Weird. I wrote but, that weird word for word. This is not the weirdest thing I've seen on the train. <laughs> yeah, at least he's not trying to sell you candy for his fake sports team or something yeah, like right? that. Or- yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's also not the least pleasant interaction I've ever seen on the subway. <laughs> As a matter of fact, this might be the most pleasant interaction between two strangers on a subway car. He starts pole dancing to terrible music, yelling "Showtime," kicking people in the face. <laughs> no, like it was a lot nicer. What time than that. is it? <laughs> <laughs> so now we're off to uh, Arnie having himself a little alcoholism back home. And he's like trying to figure out the clue by just saying it to himself over <laughs> and over again. He's like, thousand years have ended. Thousand years have ended. I love the pronunciation you're giving him as though he was able to go thousand. Anyway, um, yeah, also, I love the way they they put together, like, he's an al- he's supposed to be an alcoholic in this movie. And the way they let us know is that 
in the evenings, he's occasionally having a drink. Right? I, like, yep. like, we never see him drinking out of a flask in the middle of the day or anything. He's like a occasional evening drinker alcohol. Not that the flask thing would necessarily mean he's an alcoholic. <laughs> That's just, he's just a social day drinker. You don't know. Also, can we just comment for a second? 1990s Arnie looks great. And I just had a, a real moment of nostalgia where I was like, oh, remember when tough guys in movies didn't look like someone was playing chubby bunny with bowling balls and human skin? <laughs> remember the rock Dwayne Johnson? <laughs> remember Vin Diesel? What are you doing? So, yeah, so he he's he puzzles over the thousand years of ended thing uh, long enough that now he's got to pull out his old dead daughter box because that's where he keeps his Bible. Check. Yep. 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 Well, yeah, to double check, dead daughter and Bible reading montage. Check, check. Yeah, exactly. But before he can get to the Bible, he has to wind up his daughter's music box and cry a little bit. Oh, it's fantastic. Yeah. Arnold's fake cry face is one of my favorite things in this. It, it looks like a person who shat himself and is kind of happy about it. Like he's medium <laughs> proud that he shat himself and he's like half smiling. <laughs> it's like a soccer player who took a dive and knows what happened. <laughs> I mean, it's going to be a great story later. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, exactly. So then we cut to uh, Christine uh, getting home to her palatial New York mansion. Oh. Yeah, Christine's a multi-billionaire, apparently. I guess so, yeah. If, if you're telling me that I get to live for 20 years in this apartment and then at the end of it, Gabriel Byrne has sex with me, I'm in. Yeah, right? I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> And then we go back to Arnie, who apparently, after reading the entire Bible that evening, goes to a church to ask them uh, uh, more details about this Bible shit. But the church is closed, and he doesn't care. He goes, I want to talk to you about Thomas Aquinas. And I'm thinking to myself, I've done exactly that at closed churches before, and they make me leave. <laughs> and what's amazing about this scene is... So Arnold walks in and he tells the priest, like, hey, your priest shot at my client. And the priest's reaction in classic pre-2003 Catholic Church style goes, well, I don't know. Maybe your client deserved to be shot. We're all being real judgy here. <laughs> like, throughout the entire movie, he'll never go like, yeah, uh, this is a lot of this is on us. <laughs> He's just like, you don't know shit. You don't know shit about the church, okay? Sometimes priests need to shoot bankers you're right the priest his actual line is he goes you well you don't know everything and i'm like yeah he's asking you questions about shit dude so that's sort of like we all know that he was spooked from your visit the week before i'm like <laughs> <laughs> it might be might be it was around that time around 1998 or so when i so yeah okay and so the priest says to him do you believe in god and Arnie says, not anymore. And the priest said, what happened? And Arnie said, well, this is a movie. So obviously my mom died or my kid died, asshole. Why would you bring that up? Check. Yep. <laughs> yeah. I'm no just saying, this is a Christian movie. I got a lot of tweets from people like, oh, you're just watching movies in your spare time. No, Christian movie. Yeah, I think Check. so. So the priest is, is very sorry about his loss, but immediately turns that into the, but that's no reason to stop giving us money, though. You know, it should still be tithing, yeah. I guess. I wrote in my notes, damn, this priest is always closing. Good for him. He also says, if you don't believe in God, how can you understand his adversary? That's what the priest is yeah, telling what? Arnold here. What the fuck? Is it? Like, I don't believe that Bugs Bunny is a real talking rabbit, but I fully comprehend Elmer Fudd. Like, I get <laughs> the concept of Elmer Fudd. It's not confusing. But do you know what drives him? Do you know what's in Elmer <laughs> what Fudd's heart? Mean? <laughs> so so the priest tells him to fuck off. He's like, I got shit to do and, and wanders downstairs. Um, but Arnold sneakily follows. And he comes upon the Catholic Church's research basement, which includes a series of computers and a kidnapped lady. Tied to a bed and all bloody. <laughs> Standing in front of the accounting firm from the producers. Yeah. Yeah. That, and by the way, walking in on something like that, exactly why the april bonus episode is late guys real sorry about that but it will <laughs> we will get it next week though arnold by the way is totally unmiffed by that he's like eh, yeah it's pre-spotlight let them do their thing <laughs> right and then we cut to the devil who is watching people skate at rockefeller center apparently like you do and i guess he's now following 
red graffiti marks like Bruce Willis and 12 Monkeys or something? Yeah, it's like a satanic treasure hunt. When he got to the end, I wanted the doctor guy he meets with to be like, so did you like that we did like a little thing instead of telling you where it was? <laughs> we thought we'd make it fun. You know, it's been a thousand years and it would be cool. You seem like you didn't have fun. <laughs> How was Rockefeller Center? <laughs> <laughs> and then we cut over. Yeah, so he, he go, he's going to see the evil doctor and his family. But before he gets there, we have this great line where the daughter's like, oh, finals are such a pain in the butt. And the dad goes, don't worry, a bad grade is not the end of the world. See, he, you see, <laughs> see what they did at the end of the world. And, and look, here's the thing. We're going to talk about what's to come. But that's a real wackety schmackety do joke. For a scene that is about to be a mother-daughter incest threesome 40 seconds from now. Yeah. Right? <laughs> well, I'm the map. I'm the map. I'm the map. Fuck, mom. <laughs> <laughs> What's I the proper tone for that? How do you set that saying, scene up? How, like, what, what would you have done there, Eli? Stylistically. How do, you, how do you set up that scene? Maybe if people would read my blog. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So, uh, Gabriel Burns... Satan shows up and uh, he's talking to the uh, doctor, but then he hears a lady voice and he's like, oh, going to have to fuck that right quick. Um, so he's like, this your wife, this your daughter? He's like, yeah. Huh? He's like, you mind if I uh, fuck them and make them conjoin into each other for a little? And he's like, no, no. Go he's ahead. like, cool, no, I'll, I'll play some Moby. You guys go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted so badly for there to be an awkward after scene, like everyone's just undressed and sitting around the doctor walks in and he's like, so we have some end of the world planning to do if you're done. Everybody in here <laughs> smells gross in here. <laughs> also, okay. Anybody need a shower? <laughs> I kind of everybody felt, need a shower. <laughs> <laughs> kind of felt bad for the daughter though. Like Gabriel Byrne is kind of ignoring her. She's just sitting there having to rub it out herself while he fucks the mom. I, I don't. I mean, don't, don't get me wrong. Satan seems like a generous lover in this scene, but I mean, if you're gonna take both of them to bed, you know, don't. don't I feel like Satan should have two dicks, right? right? Or like at least a bifurcated one option to split something. There you go. No, Gabriel Burns Why with two dicks dick would be a, be a way better <laughs> perspicacious dick. Yeah, that's what he's dick needs some perspicacity. Nobody um, likes a sweaty dick. The true Eli Boss next story. And then <laughs> uh, at the end of the the sex scene, the mom's face turns into Christine's face, and then she wakes up screaming. So that was a dream that really happened a lot of body I, melting just throughout yeah. the whole thing mm -hmm. it, it looked like if like salvador dali did porn for brazzers yeah there you go if, if that <laughs> was i would continue paying for their service if you, <laughs> but let's <laughs> like it even more yeah there you go then we cut to um gabriel Byrne, and he's trying to get into the hospital where the priest that arnold shot is being kept at first the cop won't let him in but then he's like yeah but i can smell all those young boys that you seduce and the guy's like, oh, well, in that case, you know, you and me, buddy. <laughs> it's the fucking best. And the performance of the cop is so fantastic. He's just like, oh, another guy I wanted a nurse to be like walking in behind him. And he's like, oh, what's the password? Oh, my God, Larry, you fuck kids. <laughs> OK, you can come in. too. <laughs> I'm weird. I'm the weird cop. So now Gabe goes back to see Thomas Aquinas and he smokes cigarettes because he's the devil. But he also like. He needs to do something weird with his cigarette, so he opens the little, like, don't get infected box and blows his smoke in there. And I wanted the guy to be like, aw. <laughs> I mean, you're obviously going to kill me any second now, but... It, Does it have to stink just before then? Yeah. Just wanted a mom with a fat daughter to... <clears throat> in the room, like, oh, God. <laughs> really? So... Arnie and Hockney, of course, are walking into the hospital just behind. They're always one step behind the devil, and the cops are always one step behind them. And they come in, and the old guy, and stop me if you've heard this one before, is stabbed crucifix style. I'm going to stop you. <laughs> I'm going to stop you. <laughs> I think we've all heard this one before. <laughs> old guy stabbed crucified. You don't need to go any further. With scalpels I'm going to stop you one more time. <laughs> scalpels and four steps. All right, cliche. Fine. No, go ahead. Go ahead. And this is how fucked up it is for me is that my first, but my only thought upon seeing is this, this is like, there's no fucking way those four steps would hold. What do you put them in a stud? Yeah, that's <laughs> what all of us thought. He's got a all stud finder. Like, oh, really? He's going, 
he's figuring out where the studs yeah, are right. in the ceiling. <laughs> no, right there. Okay. <laughs> Got it. All right. Right arm's good. He's just hanging off his right arm. Don't be a jerk. This is serious. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get the legs eventually. Hold on. <laughs> Jesus. Put your feet together like a dancer. <laughs> like a dancer. Point the toes. This is so dumb. This is such a huge waste of time. <laughs> Couldn't you just crucify me sideways? Like, no, no. It's going to be a whole thing. Your blood's going to drip on the bed. They're going to see that for it's a whole thing. God, Jesus. Anyway, so now we they find that. Then we go up to go back to Gabe uh, Burns roughing up pedestrians on the street in a scene that completely doesn't fucking matter. Oh, my God. A huge percentage of this movie is just Satan walking around New York fucking with people. And I want to say, if that was the whole movie, I'd be totally fine with it. I'm just like, Satan walks around the comedy is a great idea for the movie. Yeah, no, that would actually be way more entertaining than this movie was. So he kills Rastafarian Shia LaBeouf with a wink in this scene. <laughs> Because he bumps into him and he's like, hey, man, watch where you're going. And then he skateboards away and he like whispers Cody Hatch and the guy turns around and gets hit by a train. <laughs> Just for us. Just for the three. We had a friend named Cody who got hit by cars all the time. While he was all the time. Constantly. <laughs> How many cars at home? Play the home game. How many cars would you get hit for before you stopped skateboarding? Was your answer one? Well, then you're not Cody Hatch. <laughs> So it's your answer, 27. You're still not Cody Hatch, yeah. Um, so now we get yet another the cops arriving at the scene of the crime scene uh, where Ar Arnie and Hockney are still just allowed to hang out at the crime scene and, you know, learn all the stuff with the cops. Where, where the cops are like, I don't know, maybe he did it himself. <laughs> did it himself. <laughs> it's like, ah, uh, and then. Uh, Ah, this will show him not to answer when I push the button. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Jamaicans. And then Arnold's answer to that is, then how did they get the last scalpel in? Yep. That's the only hole in That's the story the logistic. of Arnold. <laughs> the old man crucifying himself the ceiling. The last scalpel was the issue. Yeah, right. No, I can see how one would stab their own feet to a ceiling with a fucking set of forceps and all but the second one yeah where's the stud finder <laughs> <laughs> i wanted kevin pollack to be like he was lying on a block of ice <laughs> <laughs> oh there you go that would work um so yeah and the only reason that that line exists by the way is so that arnold can have that like i am a better cop than you i can figure this out it was not self-inflicted crucifixion to the ceiling because that's all this the, the by the way the guy who wrote this movie the, I'm sorry, the hack that wrote this fucking movie, same guy who wrote Air Force One. So just so you have an idea what really? we're dealing with. Get off my ethereal <laughs> plane. Oh, amazing. <laughs> Should have said that. <laughs> they probably cut that. It's probably in the deleted <laughs> scenes. Um, but also, okay, so they take the guy down and it turns out that either he has carved a message into himself or Satan carved a message into him before he crucified him. Right? Yeah. But luckily, the coroner on hand is able to translate from blood scrawled Latin in real time. <laughs> the coroner's like, oh, this this is Latin. Um, all right, I can read that. Oh, and then this I think is English. And I wrote in my notes, you think? You just <laughs> like freehand translated skin Latin, but English is giving you trouble. <laughs> And there's like eight words max etched into this guy's back, but the corner guy is reading this enormously long Latin yeah, phrase. Right. Cra I really wanted the note to say on on his back, just say over, and then they have to flip the course. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted it to be a, a grocery list, like the devil got bored while he was crucified. Milk, eggs. <laughs> uh, what are those things called? They're like cinnamon rolls. No, not cinnamon rolls, Frank. God. <laughs> Food cake. Yeah. So, and I love to, again, the, the coroner has no problem whatsoever deciphering all the Latin, but the part in English at the end, he's like, mm, I don't know. Maybe it says Christ in New York. And just as he says that, the dead body comes back to life and a cop shoots him dead without thinking about it. And I'm like, that's the most realistic thing that's happened in this movie so far. <laughs> yeah, everybody's so cool with it. They're like, all right, come on, man. Like, it's kind of rude to startle us. But yeah, we saw the Skittles and we had to shoot the guy. <laughs> See? Just an Ow, old man. That was right in my ear. Right <laughs> in my ear. I wanted her to turn to him and just be like, seriously, he's white. 
He's so clearly <laughs> white. Yeah, this is so that. much paperwork now. <laughs> so Artie and, and Hockney leave, and Arnie figures out it's not Christ in New York. Maybe it's Christine in New York. And I wrote in my notes as a joke, well, I'm sure there's only one Christine York in New York. But yeah, yeah there is. I, I, I checked. There's like 16 of them on LinkedIn. Anyway, yeah. But <laughs> luckily for the purposes of this movie, yeah, there's just the one. So they find her using the, you know, that database of driver's license that all private citizens have a um, have access to. Yeah, they use that. I see ads for it on Facebook. <laughs> is he cheating? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's what he went to is he cheating dot com. Gotcha. Um, so now we cut back to Christine New York that lives in New York City and she's working out and learning Italian and all sweaty. And this is really as good as the movie's ever going to get. Oh, and she's talking about cheese. I really like this movie. <laughs> like genuinely. <laughs> Genuine. And, and we're about, I'm about to like it even better yeah, in a second. Because we get one of the most gratuitous boob shots I've ever seen in any fucking movie, right? When you say gratuitous, you mean awesome? Just fantastic. <laughs> I feel like I think awesome it's like and boob shot. Yeah, that's it. It was a perspicacious <laughs> boob shot. No, but like, okay, like, don't don't get me wrong. I am all in favor of this woman's boobs. They are phenomenal. But like, it's it's like she's got uh, the butler comes and says, "Oh, you need to get in the shower." And she's like, "Oh, okay." And then like, they, we watch her walk into the bathroom, and she just pulls her shirt off right before she gets to the door, so that we get this <laughs> you know tiny little Boobies. nanosecond of tits. <laughs> How many times do they expect me to come during this movie? I I max out around like one. I'm gonna I'm still gonna try again, but it's getting crazy. I like this he, movie. He doesn't even have a grenade launcher yet. Yeah, right. <laughs> so I'm doing the rest of this episode under protest. This is a great movie. I'm gonna I'm gonna keep doing it, but great movie. Yeah, no, there, there is no question. This was the best movie we've ever done for this show. So but, good. Um, so she heads to the shower, but wouldn't you know it? She's standing in blood. And I wrote, gross, period stuff. Oh, God. <laughs> what the fuck? But it's less gross. A guy is dead. A guy is dead. It's, it's yeah, way less, less gross. Less disturbing <laughs> than, than period. It's, it's just a dead human. It's just a dead throat slit human. Way, That's... way less gross than period. <laughs> Luckily. Eli will do PK, but he won't do uh, any kind of sex around that time of the, you know. Yeah, exactly. So You uh, got to draw a line. So, eh. <laughs> also, can we talk about the logistics of these hitmen? Okay, because there's there's a, there's a group of hitmen about to come in and kill her, and their idea was, okay, all right, here's what we're going to do. We're going to let the butler go in and tell her to go to the shower, and then we're going to kill the butler, fill the bathtub up with water, <laughs> exactly. put him in the tub, wait for her to see him, you know, because it'll be a big thing, and she'll be like, ah, and then we'll run in and try to kill her, but we all run in through the same door where there are two doors. <laughs> what the fuck kind of planning went into this? Anyway, so this is a very yakety sex religious <laughs> <is>. execution. <laughs> <laughs> At one point, she like throws the thing out the window to fool them into thinking she's jumped out the window and then hides in her closet. And there's a real like, uh oh, looks like she's not here. Uh oh, shoe attack. Boink. <laughs> <laughs> Like, if she had crashed a painting over the guy's head and he's got, like, a sexy lady body at some point during this, I would not have been surprised. Yeah, it was that kind of scene. And, of course, wouldn't you know it, Arnie and Hockney are heading to her house just that moment. Uh, and then, you know, they see that she's throwing stuff out their window. So they just shoot their way into the house. These two, not cops, just shoot their way into some person's home that they're pretty sure is the person they're looking for. Yeah, and they even acknowledge this as they're heading there. Like, mm -hmm. he's like, hey man, like, we're not cops. And he's like, it's not illegal to talk to another person. And it's like, pretty sure it's illegal to like, find out where they live and stalk them to their home and bring guns there. What, well, do you want to do the movie or not? All right, let's do the movie. <laughs> Um, but meanwhile, upstairs, there's only one guy left to kill her. So he reaches his, you know, you know how you have to cock a gun to stab someone to death by reaching well above your head. Uh, right when he does that, she moves and he's like, oh, fuck, I didn't think of that. She would move when I try to. St God damn it. Uh, there's also this amazing moment where Arnold is trying to catch the priest before he escapes and he grabs his heart necklace thing, which is going to come back in a way that totally doesn't matter later and i wrote in my notes oh now he'll never find his best friend <laughs> <laughs> but also 
how does this grab work? Right? Like he dives to grab the dude and just gets the, ne- just try to visualize how you could dive to grab a person, but only get their necklace. You might as well just have like the guy's social security card at the end. Yeah. Like, right. out of his <laughs> Honestly, though, if that had slipped out of his pocket, at least it would have made sense from a perspective of physics. Right? Yeah. So now we get what I believe is our fourth. The cops are now here at the scene of the crime scene in the last hour. Again, Arnie and Hockney are allowed to just hang out. In the cops' defense, they are now at least slightly miffed that they show up to every location in this investigation 10 minutes after Arnold Schwarzenegger does. Yeah. Also, okay, so Arnold Schwarzenegger is also killing people left and right in these things, and they don't seem to, like, let him know that's not okay, right? Because he throws a guy during this fight scene, he throws a guy down the stairs. And, of course, if you're a bad guy in a movie and you go downstairs, you die. So, like, he's now, he's got a body count of two, and the cops are like, okay, man, now you need to stop murdering all our suspects, all right? All right. (laughs) All right, we're going to, this is a lot of paperwork you're causing for me, but you, (laughs) you're a rapscallion, so (laughs) this is your one. (laughs) So then the uh, the stepmom shows up, and she's like, oh, you're fine. And the, and the and Christine goes, yeah, but Carson, the butler, she's like, yeah, I don't give a fuck about him. But you, you are good. <laughs> That's what matters. So now we head outside where, where Hockney and Arnie are now on a stakeout in front of her house. Oh, well, before this happens, he finds her music box. Oh, uh-huh. uh, and she had the same music box as his the daughter and she walks in the room and he's like, uh, oh, my daughter had this music box. And she's like, oh, that's funny. Don't touch my stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a weird reaction to the this is the same as my dead daughter. Yeah. <laughs> kind of. You could be sympathetic, but you also could not. So evil doctor calls stepmom and says, oh, you need to bring Christine to the temple so the devil can fuck her. And the stepmom's like, Fuck off. You know what traffic is like this time? We're in Midtown. We, it would take me two hours to get. I'll wait until 830, and then I'll, it'll take 30 minutes. I'll be there at the same fucking time. And the doctor <laughs> relates this information, and Satan punches through his head. <laughs> through his head, which, to be fair, I get it. He lit all those candles. He's disappointed. <laughs> but I feel like now he's out of henchmen, right? Like, he just he wipes off his hand, and he's like, ah, well, now I've... Now I got to go get her myself because this is fucking, I feel like I should have waited. This is on me. So anyway, back to Arnie and and Hockney in the van. Hockney is uh, thinking about how much he would rather be hanging out with his fuck doll right now. I get it. And then Mm -hmm. Arnie realizes that the heart necklace is actually the special forces tattoo from Lethal Weapon. Yeah. No, okay. It was a different thing, but that's, I mean. But he does manage to match it up to the exact symbol in the book he just pulled from her bookshelf. And he's comparing them for a good four seconds. He's like, yeah, he's like hmm. okay. Uh-huh. Red heart. Red heart. <laughs> Double check. Knife. Knife. Triple check. <laughs> yeah. he, he runs in and the mom's like, no, he, I, I don't like it. And Christine's reaction is she's a little overprotective, to which my reaction was, dude, someone tried to murder you like 30 minutes ago. Yes, she's right. going to be a little overprotective. <laughs> Well, and also she has to address the whole, like, you're not a cop. What the fuck are you doing here? Because he says, you know, I took this necklace off of this uh, guy who tried to kill you. And she's like, did you give that evidence to the police? And he's like, no, you know, they had to catalog it and analyze it. It's a bunch of dumb police shit if, if, I, if, they had, if I'd given it to them. So, no. Yeah, literally, that's his answer. His answer is, I would have given this to the police, but they use evidence and evidence is dumb. I guess. <laughs> So he pulls out this book that he's found the symbol in and he says to her, he's like, this amulet is from a secret evil Vatican Masonic. I'm like, I'm going to stop you there, guys. Those words don't go. It's from a Jewish Muslim. No, no, but it's not. <laughs> it's not that. It, and he literally says, this says they're the good guys. And I wanted her to be like, what, the script? And he was like, yeah, people <laughs> thought it was confusing because like. One side of this movie is trying to murder you, and one side of the movie is trying to fuck you, and I'm just kind of like hanging out, but I don't really seem motivated as a character, you know? I wanted Arnold to piece it together here, like, they were the good guys. They tried to murder you. I'm a good guy. And he just shoots her in the face. (laughs) Thousand years offended. Thousand. Oh, no, I get it now. 
But of course, we got to get a jump scare that is completely fucking meaningless again. So she's about to eat an apple when suddenly it's filled with demon maggots. No reason. Just yep. they could do demon maggots. They're like, well, if we can do demon maggots, we might as well do demon maggots. And I get that. I get that. If I could it's do the demon old maggots. Film adage. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. If it demon maggots, Morgan, can it you leads. throw in some demon maggots here? <laughs> some get a little <laughs> demon maggot sound effects, perhaps. Yeah. Um, okay. So now Satan's showing up, but he sees that that Todd Hockney's in the van right over there, and there's a cop car sitting there waiting for him. So whatever will he do? Now keep in mind, he can make restaurants explode just by walking out of them, but he has a different plan that involves his penis. Well, wait. The now, restaurant plan could have thing. involved his penis, too. Well, I that's think. true. That's we don't what know. I'm about to yeah. say. He was in the bathroom. Exactly. Oh. Exactly. This is going to make sense in a second when yeah, we explain what happens. Yeah, he has explosive piss. Okay, it all makes... The whole movie makes sense now. Yeah, so he pisses on the doorstep. Now, first of all, like the cops would stop you from doing that anyway, even if that's not why they were there, because he's standing right in front of this cop car pissing on the street. But apparently the devil pisses napalm, <laughs> not gasoline, because like yep. he he pisses and the and his his pee stream somehow forks. Well, he can control his pee stream on the sidewalk to multiple cars. Is also a power he He's has. He's been waiting to use that power for so goddamn. Well, that explains it, right? He's like, I could have blown this up like the restaurant, but I've never had a chance to use my multiple piss stream control mechanisms before. You should have two dicks. Right. And you we, should have two dicks. I'm just saying, it would make more sense. Problem in this movie that would be solved by a double dicked Satan. Well said. Or at least bifocal dicks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, now, now we got to talk about bifocal dicks for a second. <laughs> they could see no, better. That's, no, that's what my dick is like. Is that if you look at it through one lens, it looks small, but it's not. It's you, not. If you it's angle, a if you angle down, you, you get angle one dick for bifocal close dick. up and one dick for far away. It yeah, makes sense exactly. <laughs> but here's the thing: there's a like a there's like a doink 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 shot of the pee sneaking up on <laughs> Kevin Pollock, yeah. oh. and I really thought we were gonna get a P versus Kevin Pollock <laughs> fight. Like, this, <laughs> you actually. <laughs> You actually see him in the van, and he, he gets like a look on his face, like, is that demon piss? I could swear I smell demon piss under the van, and he gets out, and it is. Yeah, it is, it is demon piss. And so Gabriel Byrne throws his cigarette in it, again, like totally ripping off usual suspects here. He throws his cigarette out into his flammable piss stream, and you know how, like, if fire starts and it goes under a van, the van explodes like a Hinden, like the Hindenburg? That I happens. That. Yeah, I, I found that out the hard way as well. And the cop car explodes, too. <laughs> so now shit's really hitting the fan, and Arnie realizes that he needs to get Christine the fuck out of there. But, and this is the highlight of the film, folks, Fat Stepmom shows up to beat the fuck out of Arnold Schwarzenegger. This movie is checking all my boxes. <laughs> I love Kathy Bates beats the shit out of Arnold. It's fantastic. <laughs> Boy, does she. She's got demon claws. She got super strength. It's pretty great. Now, I want to point out that this actress uh, in an interview later says that during the filming of this scene, Arnold farted in her face more than once. <laughs> and I think it's because like, I, I, I feel like this was originally ri written so that Arnold would beat the hell out of her, and she's like, you know what, fuck it. He just had heart surgery. I'm just going to whip his ass and see what he does. But yeah. <laughs> and he defended himself with farts, like a gentleman <laughs> and a scholar. <laughs> Eli's done that before. I've wrestled Eli. I'll never do it again. Um, <laughs> so yeah, but but eventually he manages to overpower the fat, short, elderly woman. And throw her through a glass. <laughs> throw her <table>. through <laughs> Face first. Look, I know it's a scary, sad world sometimes, but there is readily available footage of Arnold Schwarzenegger throwing an old woman through a glass table, and you can watch it anytime you like. Yeah, well, there you go. So, okay, okay, also, so now there's explosions outside. Satan comes into the house. They're about to run off, but Satan comes into the house, and he's like, Christine, I'm here to fuck you. And this is like one of 11 times in this movie where Satan could solve all of his problems with a brisk power walk. Right? <laughs> <laughs> well, he's also standing in fire as he says this. And I wanted him to be like, Christine, I'm, oh, am I on fire? Shit. Ah, oh, I feel like this ruins it. I feel stupid. Yeah, right. <laughs> For some fire. reason, my body is invulnerable to this unless it's shot out of a gun. 
<laughs> for some reason. Hey, yeah, yeah, exactly. So they run away. Satan's all pissed at the old fat lady, so he finishes her off, which is kind of honestly like merciful at this point. Arnold just left her there to bleed to death. Well, um, so it seems like a dick move. He needs a three strike system. He's he's really tough on his subordinates <laughs> here. That's why he's alone. And okay, so now they run into one of those alleys, you know, like they have in New York City. When Marge the cop shows up, that's Marge the cop, not Madge the dog. Totally different uh, mammal there. But Marge Fun the fact, cop. Played by Madge the dog. Oh, really? Awesome. Awesome. Had yeah. no idea. Um, she's got a lot of range, Madge does. All right. So, <laughs> and the cops just show up and just start shooting at Arnold and the girl. So Arnold tosses out his gun, puts his hands on his heads, and starts slowly walking towards them. Going like, hey, Marge, what's going on here? What's the deal? And she's like, shoot him, kill him. Well, luckily, he has ear holsters. Where did those sleeve guns? guns. Oh, yeah. is that, oh, that's what it was. He's been walking around with sleeve guns this whole time. Oh, okay. You remember earlier in the movie when they established those sleeve guns? No. Neither does this movie. Well, actually, they <laughs> but did. But he's got them. They did, actually. They did show him putting guns up his sleeve at one point. Well, yeah, the when they're in that van, when they should have been in the helicopter. Yeah, yeah. It, well, right. It wasn't oh. on, like, this day. He was packing anything. them in like he was going to pull out guns like scarves. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Spoilers. Cut that. Cut that. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody knows where those scarves come from. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's where they come from. So now, again, Satan shows up just walking too slowly. If he wasn't so worried about looking fucking cool, he'd already taken care of this. So he shows up. Marge and the cop are dead, but he has to bring Marge back to life because he still needs her help. Yeah, he says, call your people. And I wanted her to wake up and be like, what do you mean your people? Oh, <laughs> ah, no, sorry. I, I meant cops. Uh, I didn't uh, the mean other, the other. <laughs> No, I, it's crazy. I don't even see color. That's what's so crazy about me so, is I don't even see color. <laughs> so now they head out to the wild forests on the outskirts of Manhattan. And she's like, and, and of course, he has to say, who was that man on the stairs? And she's like, I've seen him before. He was in Usual Suspects. I was sure he was Kaiser Soze the whole time. I, I was, <laughs> yeah. She's like, yeah, I've had sex dreams about him my whole life. And he's like, oh, um, awkward. <laughs> <laughs> Starting at what age have you had <laughs> sex dreams about him? Uh, I feel like there's like one or two viewers who are way more interested now. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> they have a story. And she says, like, she's like, I'm worried that I won't be able to not fuck him. I mean... Gabriel Burns, that fucking accent is so hot. I agree. I get it. Yeah. I get it. I get it. So th then we go, as they, he takes her to see like the priests that were torturing that crazy lady earlier. And that makes sense. He's got a crazy lady. They specialize in torturing them. But Artie, of course, goes in gun first. The way I walk into a church. Right, and the priest is like, you don't you don't need that gun. I've got a lady tied in the basement. It's pretty much nothing you can do at this point. <laughs> Yeah, and he goes like, you know, he comes in and he's like, I want to know what's going on and this script is convoluted as fuck. Someone explain it to me. <laughs> and we get the part of this movie that just had me absolutely tearing my fucking hair out. Number of the Beast? Oh my fucking God. All right. So he says, yeah! oh, Jesus fucking Christ. I love this so much. <laughs> so he says like, oh, you know, it's the number of the beast. And the girl goes, six, six, six. He's like, no. In dreams, numbers often appear backwards and upside down. Nope. <laughs> they and sure don't. Also, I'm sorry, St. John was dreaming in Arabic numerals? <laughs> what? <laughs> How? It's like, I, I, I can't do 666 in my head and fucking... Uh, Roman numerals, damn it, that could have been funny. <laughs> they they all show up at the wrong side of the of God, and he's like, no, no, you guys were dreaming. That, that's where all the bad people are. You want to be on my right hand. Wait, who's right? My right. Okay, wait, let me turn around. I don't want to L. This one makes an L, and this one makes an R. So, okay, okay, yeah, got it. L X V I. Well, yeah, but you could just sit there Flipped while over. me and Eli bam. Yeah. I didn't I didn't have that luxury. Also, he has to demonstrate this. Right, he can't just say it. He has to. He has to write the numbers down on a piece of paper and show them what they look like upside down. 
<laughs> and it's it's really awkward when he has to turn it because he's like, all right, there's the sixes and there's the bees. Oh fuck! Uh, no, that's let me. There's the nine. Let me make my sixes look a little odd so that they'll look like yeah, <laughs> right, right. Also, because you know Arnold even points out how stupid this is. He's like, okay, so the end of the world happens in Eastern Standard Time. Why is why would that? And he's like, no, 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 no. I know that seems like bullshit, but it turns out that the Gregorian calendar was like retro dated to this event, so that it would correspond yeah. with the thousand years things. It even says the Gregorian monks. Who apparently the Gregorian calendar is named after. Nope. <laughs> nope. Nope. No, I haven't. <laughs> no. I, I did love the like idea of the devil accidentally kidnapping her and impregnating her early, just sitting there. Ah, I kind of thought that I'm sorry, this is my fault. I I'm been supposed to do this on Jerusalem time. Fuck. For a thousand years. <laughs> um I don't know. It looks like it's a bear and a fish. <laughs> <laughs> And then he throws out this line that I think I'm going to use the next time someone shows up at my door and wants to Christianize me. Um, he says, between your faith and my Glock, I'll take my Glock. I'd get rid of him. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that indeed would work. Atheist extremism. Obama wouldn't say it. Trump will. <laughs> Chapel <laughs> Hill. Never forget. Faith. Oh, Jesus. Parking spots are important. <laughs> So, yeah, so, but now the priests are like, okay, Arnold, <laughs> you get the fuck, you just took a second for him. Um, but Ar he's like, Arnold, you get the fuck out of there. We'll, we'll take her from here. And, and so she has to make the decision, which she, does she want to stay with the priests or does she want to go with Arnold? Right. Which, I mean, that's a tough choice because either way, you're getting groped. Yeah. Oh, this yeah. This is just a universal case of do diddling. You've got Satan who says he wants to fuck you, the Catholic Church, and Arnold Schwarzenegger. It's not a good look, no matter what happens. Well, but she makes the right choice because she's like, okay, I'm a woman and I'm uh, over 18. I think the priests are my best bet here, actually. Yeah. Not a maid. <laughs> so, I mean, obviously, at this point, I think we all need a minute to reset all our um, priests rape children jokes. So we're going to pause for a quick break. But before we do, let me give Act 3 the hard sell here. What the fuck happened to Arnold Schwarzenegger? Were his older movies good and I was just more forgiving back then? And was he going to fight a baby deer later? Find out the answers to these questions and more when we return for the cataclysmic conclusion of End of Days. Hi, welcome to Genetic Fancy Florists. How can I help you? Uh, yeah, I, I was uh, hoping to do Mother's Day right this year. Uh, and I was thinking... Going to use bloomthat.com? Uh... No, well, no, I, I mean, I was looking to uh, pay more, wait longer, get a worse product. I, I feel like you shouldn't be telling me this. You'd think that, right? Look, I, I'm just looking for a beautiful bouquet to show mom I love her this year. Oh, I understand. How does this sound? The best price we offer on a gorgeous bouquet. Just picked, hand-designed, Instagram-ready, plus a premium designer vase that costs everyone else about $15. Plus handmade Caramel treats. Normally $10, but free. Wow. Well, that all sounds amazing. I got to be honest. I thought that you were going to tell me. Because that is what Bloom That is offering. What Bloom That was offering. And, and dare I ask what you're offering? Uh, something half as nice at twice the price, but, but I will make you feel like a peasant while I do it. Okay. Well, well how do I get started? Well, you go to bloomthat.com slash God, that's B-L-O-O-M-T-H-A-T slash G-O-D, and find the perfect handcrafted designer flowers. Uh, that sounds great, but I meant if I would... You'll automatically get the free premium designer vase and caramel treats, a $25 value. Mother's Day is this week. Take three minutes and really blow her away. Again, that's bloomthat.com slash good for a premium designer bouquet. Free vase and treats. Don't wait. This amazing offer won't last, and it's only available to our listeners if you go to bloomthat.com slash G-O-D. Yeah, but I meant here, like you. Oh, uh, well, we don't take credit cards because we think it's the 1800s, and Kyler here will deliver your flowers to your mother on June 19th, 2047. I'm going to mash him. Hi, Kyler. I'm, I'm from the other show, too. He is. <laughs> he is a crossover. <laughs> <laughs> I like Kyler. I hope we keep Kyler around. Jericho Kane, good job keeping the clients safe today. 
Thank you, Chief. I'm off to find the guy behind it all. Um, okay, well, I'm not a chief. This is a private security firm, and uh, we, we don't do that. We don't oh, don't worry. I'll catch the parp. Um, no, no, no. That's that's the cops. We just protect people for money, and then we go home. And then That's it. Oh, oh, I see. I tracked the shooter to a house, and he cut out his own tongue. Yeah, that's, that sounds pretty gross, but again, none of this is our job. Our job is over. We're we're done. Just all done. No more. Okay. But what do you think this Bible passage means? Damn it. And we're back for more of this shit. When we last left our hero, the chick was uh, about to get raped and tortured by a bunch of priests, and Arnold's character had no remaining stake in the plot. So now it's really getting going. <laughs> Uh, and we'll return to the action with the Pope finding out the good news that the New Yorkers have the girl. And I want nothing more than to go into this fucking movie and just hack into it so that we can change the Pope's subtitle to, uh, no, no, I ordered a boy. <laughs> <laughs> See, I, I thought it was funny because now he's in a wheelchair, which definitely makes this movie a prequel to Breaking Bad. Like he's he's in a wheelchair now and then he, <laughs> he'll just be in a wife beater in the following scene. And then we head back to Arnie's house. Uh, where he meets the devil. Amazing. <laughs> and, and I love that the devil's introduction, he like looks around to see how the devil got, gets in and the devil's like, ooh, doors are locked. No sign of an entry. How did I get in? And he was, he was just like, oh, you're a midget. No, no um, it's not, a, not actually a riddle. I'm the, <laughs> I'm the devil. There's an <laughs> umbrella when it rains and there's not an umbrella. No, it's just, I'm the devil. I have <laughs> teleportation Look, powers. Right I should have now. started this different. I thought you were smarter, but no. Yeah, and then, of course, the devil gives him shit for being a drinker. And then he offers, he's like, oh, tell me where the girl is and I'll give you everything you want. And what he wants, what the way he represents this is by making a Christmas tree appear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But also Nat King Cole music. Oh, all right, yeah. <laughs> Love that record. For a second, I thought <laughs> that was just going to be what Arnold wanted. He was just like, oh, it's beautiful. Is this a <laughs> Danish form? <laughs> yeah. You're Johnny Mathis, too? Yeah. She's yeah. she's, a, she's at St. Francis. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> this is so great. Look at the angel. <laughs> <laughs> I can never get Down. the lights that even. <laughs> so, yeah, the tinsel will not fall off. The cats won't eat it. But yeah, but no, the devil is offering to give him back his family if he will help her uh, help him find the girl. And that seems like a, a pretty good deal, actually. Satan's way better than God. And, is, is the <laughs> message yep. I get from this movie. Yeah. Uh -huh. And OK, but during this vision, he like, you know, because like he's seeing his family the night before they died or whatever. And it starts with the little girl in the tub. And I'm like, I know why Eli chose this movie now. <laughs> <laughs> I have a very specific filter on Mr. Skin. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Monsieur Skin. Also, also the, the, the French fucker. <laughs> <laughs> and then bad guys show up to kill his wife and daughter in this vision. Which is weird, right? That like armed burglars broke in to kill his family after. He tested, so we're, we learned in a second that they were crooked cops and he testified against them. And so their way of silencing him was to kill his family? Afterwards. <laughs> Afterwards. <laughs> Afterwards. Yeah. They're not very, like, everyone in this movie is a fucking idiot. That, it makes a lot more sense if you just assume everyone's an idiot. Um, but also, like, is this so clearly a vision? Because he says at one point, he's like, oh, my daughter and uh, wife would not be real and then the bad guys comes in, come in and he starts shooting at them. Shooting at them. And then when he fails to shoot them, he tries to tackle one. And he's like, okay, now, <laughs> now I get it. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> so it also, so yeah, so he watches his wife and daughter get shot and killed. Well, actually, he hears them get shot, killed, and then goes into the room where they got shot and killed where the, the blood stains don't really match up. The, oh, I, these bad guys... They clearly had a meeting about the blood spatter. They're like, all right, we shot the mom and daughter, but now let's hold them up near each wall and shoot <laughs> them some more because it'll be cooler. Like, they'll be. All right, look, grab the daughter, put her in a fireman's carry, and now spin in a circle. There you go. There you <laughs> go. Keep spinning. I'll do the there trick. There you go. And now just like, <laughs> now rub up and down the wall a little. Uh, back, back, back. Nice. Nice. <laughs> this looks great. 
He'll never testify against us again. (laughs) (laughs) Also, I love to, and this, this happens so often in these movies. Have you ever noticed that even the most hack of Hollywood writers with fucking credits like Air Force One uh, on their filmography is able to give the devil a perfect destroying Christianity in 11 words or less monologue? So weird that they'd all be so good at that. (laughs) Why is that? He's easy to write for. Yeah, apparently. Um, So, yeah, but then he tries for one of those pithy Arnie one-liners where he's like, I want you to go to hell because you're the devil, get it? And Gabriel (laughs) Burns just like, ugh, why am I in this movie? And his wife is just (laughs) off camera waving a big check. Yeah, right. (laughs) I know, I know. It's just, I feel like... I feel like people are going to be like, oh, we should do a podcast about Christian movies and <laughs> they'll get to us and it will kind of ruin usual suspects because I don't work a lot after this. It's not like I'm a crazy big movie maker. It's really just this and usual suspects. <laughs> yeah, Stigmata. Yeah, G- Gabriel Byrne is using his rage about working with Arnold very well in this film. <laughs> right. Arnold's enormous face right fucking next to him and like spittle flying like a wood chipper and his Gabriel Byrne, his eyes just twitch. It's perfect for the scene. Yeah, because like, I mean, say what you want. Gabriel Byrne is a phenomenally good actor and watching him across from Arnold Schwarzenegger he's so is so mad, painful. but he's supposed to be mad in the scene. So yeah, it works. it works. Yeah, exactly. He's like Michael Caine acting with a Muppet, except <laughs> the Muppets did a way better job. And that's a mean thing to say about Kermit. <laughs> So, yeah, so the devil gets pissed, picks Arnold up by the throat because everyone in this movie can whip his ass, apparently, and throws him out the window backwards. OK, right. Head like like back of the head first. And he catches the ledge. How is that physically? Did he do a spin? He did a spin. Oh, OK. Yeah, he no, he definitely a did a flip. He, it was a down left left and then <laughs> low kick. And he did one of those little cartwheels. Oh, OK. All right. Now it makes perfect sense. So, yeah, so he's hanging there from the ledge and he's getting cut up, getting his hands all cut up. And the devil's like, all right, if you'll tell me where she is, I'll let you back in. And Arnold tricks him into thinking that he wants to let be let back in. But he actually throws the devil out the window. Hooray, he's theologically conservative. <laughs> <laughs> here's, here's the thing that's crazy about this. OK, the devil, he shoots him earlier and the devil's like, you can't hurt me. I'm the devil. But then he throws him out the window and the devil's like, okay, well, that hurt. Yeah. That- <laughs> so is the devil, the de- it is very unreliable what hurts slash does not hurt the devil. Because he gets shot and he just like instantly heals and is like, nope, doesn't bother me at all. But like impact wounds take an hour and a half to heal. I, I, I don't. Right. But burns don't even show up. And then, yeah, explosions are enough. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's fucking crazy. So he throws the devil out, to, out the window and then. Uh, there's a knock at the door and it's it should just be the devil coming back and going no dude I you just did the gun <laughs> thing why do you I'm the devil I, you know I, I feel lie too like this is idiots <laughs> yeah so but it's actually it's Hockney at the door now you'll remember Hockney was getting blown up in the van last time we saw or getting blown up as he walked out of the van last time we saw him so Arnold is not really convinced. He's like, wait a minute. What if this is the devil disguising himself as Hockney? <laughs> oh, this is one of my favorite parts of the movie. <laughs> so he shoots Kevin Pollock. He just shoots him in the arm. Right, yeah, to test, <laughs> to make sure. Now, okay, first of all, <laughs> like when he shot the devil, it's not like the bullet stopped and said, nope, devil, devil. I mean, if it was the devil, he could have just gone, ow, oh, my arm. And then that would have thwarted Arnold's plan. <laughs> but Kevin Pollock's just like, what the fuck, man? You shot me in the arm. Because I needed to find out. Like, there was no other way to check this. So good. <laughs> yeah, and then he goes, what, does it hurt? And he grabs at the gunshot wound. I, I had to pause for like 10 minutes. <laughs> so good. Might as well just like cut his bladder out with a knife and check for gasoline. Like <laughs> That is, so by the way, how I am going to check for... <laughs> Heath, next time I see him, just like, ah, ah there you are. Oh, that's, that's really <laughs> you. You are not the devil. Clearly. My best friend. <laughs> Wear those shorts and see if I murder you. <laughs> so, that's a good way to check. So, yeah, meanwhile, at the church, you know, she's sitting there waiting. She's going, like, how much longer do we have? And this is like every moment I've ever had in a church. She's like, how much fucking longer do I have to be here? And he's like, oh, it's until midnight. 
I wanted the priest to be like, I'm a thinking of a thing that begins. I'm a going on a picnic and it starts. I'm a going to bring a apple. <laughs> Don't be a bitch. <laughs> but then all of a sudden, a cardinal shows up with his posse swinging major dick. And it turns out they're the bad slash good guys there to kill her. Masonic Vatican evil Jewish Muslims. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and to be fair, we haven't acknowledged this yet, but they are right. Like, it would be yeah. better to kill that lady than let the entire world end. It's not like Satan automatically wins if they do a bad thing to stop him. It's, it's, it is a better choice. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. Like, if they're like, oh, well, you know, I'll go to hell for killing this lady unless, of course, I tell Jesus I'm super, super sorry. So, yeah, no, this, yeah, makes no fucking sense. Especially because, like, after this, the devil's going to get his hands on her. So, yeah, the, the good guys should have killed her. But so they're just about to kill her. They, like, subdue the, the good priests or whatever. And the guy raises the knife again. You have to cock the knife. You have to raise it way above your head. And just as he does, Arnold comes in and shoots the blade right off of it. <laughs> and that, but that's okay because he tries to stab her anyway with the, like, handle. A second time. Yeah. He shoots the blade off of it, and then he's like, eh, still. And he's like, no, oh, bam, shoots him in the hand. And he's like, okay, fine, fine, I'm done. Yeah. Ow. <laughs> just go straight to shooting the body of the bad guy. Right? Force push, whatever <laughs> it is. Just use your thing. <laughs> so, yeah, but instead, right then, we get another god quake, and all of a sudden, the candles flare up, and Satan shows up. So, yeah, earthquake and spontaneous candle. It's just like a weird asymmetric thing from Satan. Those are the two things that you announce yourself with. Yeah. And really, do you want to announce yourself here? <laughs> no. Also, I thought the idea was that Satan couldn't get inside holy ground. Like, Arnold was the secret keeper a la Harry Potter for the church, and that's why Satan was allowed to get in. Like, Wormtail's about to pop out from behind one of the pews and be like, sorry, <laughs> sorry, I'll just... All bad guys. I work for all bad guys. <laughs> I will leave it to someone younger to laugh at that joke. Um, yeah, also, okay, so yeah, so Arnie and, and Christine run off, and the priests are all trying their little, like, I command you in the name of Jesus type stuff. <laughs> it's so good. It's Satan it just destroys all of them. Like, one priest tries to block him with the cross, so he gets stabbed in the face with the cross. He does! And then it's like, in the name of God, stab you. In the name of God, punch through your face. I love this movie. <laughs> right? Why are we doing this movie? Who's the third guy that's like, all right, in the name of God, and he's like, really? Really? <laughs> but you're the one? <laughs> <laughs> it's like a Jack oh, Reacher you moment. Yeah. Me. See, I knew. No, I'm just kidding. Snap. <laughs> yeah, no, and and of course he has to the last guy, he has to snap his neck with the 180 degree neck snap. So good. So good. <laughs> I fucking love it. So yeah, so they run out into another one of those New York alleys that you find so often. Okay. See, this is why you don't go in rainy alleyways. Just avoid those. Like one time. I want to see something good happen there in a movie, but yet that's it's not going to work out for you. No, and look, again, there are three alleys in all of New York City. Why the fuck do they keep winding up in them? Anyway, yeah, but apparently all sides of this alley are blocked by the, the flashlight people. Flashlight <laughs> zombie Satanists. Yeah, exactly. It's so embarrassing when you show up for your satanic ritual beating and you forgot your flashlight. Oh, my God. <laughs> Everyone's just like, oh, Dave forgot his flashlight. You're going to be okay, Dave? God, I fucking. I'm just going to. Can gonna, someone lend me one? Do we have an extra? I could no. use a lighter, but it's raining. No. Yeah. You can't borrow an extra because we're Satan worshipers, and that's a <laughs> nice thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so all of the evil flashlight Satanists decide to beat the fuck out of Artie, but Hockney shows up just in time. But it's not really Hockney, it's Devil Hockney. And so he just kidnaps the girl and drives away. Well, he kidnaps the girl, locks the doors and drives a little bit away. <laughs> and she's like, no, let me out. And I wrote in my notes, usual suspects guy is the first Uber driver in film history. <laughs> <laughs> I know you saw the exit. You don't, you're not even on a meter. What are you doing? <laughs> you lonely? <laughs> <laughs> But also, okay, so so now he's like pulling off just a little bit so that he can be there to pick up the devil when the devil gets done fucking with Arnie. But like, she's just sitting in the back seat crying. And I'm like, well, you could at least like, 
you know, I don't know, grab him by the face or something, try to unlock the door. I mean, something. Yeah. You're Team not in a player. cop car. She's just in the back. Okay, fine. I went on a picnic, and I'm thinking of the <laughs> capo. You can't do that. Priest already <laughs> used that one earlier. <laughs> Also, it's a new game. So the so the cops are or so the uh, flashlight people are beating up Arnold Schwarzenegger, and I'm thinking to myself, like, guys, Bruce Lee would be demanding more bad guy teamwork in the choreography here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it is ridiculous how like one at a time the fights going on there, and of course at the same time Arnie's going for the gun like it's the antidote in Temple of Doom. <laughs> And they end up kicking the gun around like gun soccer at one point. <laughs> too. I was joking before. It's really weird. Like, like five or ten gun kicks really wanted somebody to get shot there. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, but now he grabs the gun. He finally does get the gun, and he shoots the devil. He's got like 11 people around <laughs> him, and he shoots the one guy who's impervious to bullets and who he knows is impervious to bullets. And Gabriel Byrne reacts accordingly. He's just like, ugh. The fuck you thinking, Ugh. man? I can't. We, this is embarrassing. Are you watching the rest of this? Would you read the script? So, but then they finally they subdue Arnie, and but instead of killing him, uh, Satan wants him to see the end of days with his own eyes. So they crucify him, thus drawing a subtle <laughs> parallel between the hero of this movie and Jesus. So they they clearly had this whole thing ready like they rigged up a pulley system and a giant cross on mm -hmm. a built like what were they doing just like driving around the city with this thing in a truck and they finally <laughs> find Arnold he has to drive across town at rush hour like okay we need these in all the alleys no, 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 guys take the park go through the park obviously <laughs> and then of course we have to cut back to the pope so the pope can find out that the catholics in new york lost track of the girl yeah and the i mean am i right was the pope in the wheelchair not Clearly getting blown by the Cardinal. Yes. Like very. Absolutely. 100% yes. getting blown by the I mean, they hacked my browser history. They had to. This movie <laughs> is hitting so many checkboxes. I'm not saying I want to be like disabled and get blown by a Cardinal, but just like sometimes I want to watch that. That's, yeah. that's what I'm saying. Yeah, exactly. Sometimes you pretend. Yeah. <laughs> it's like butt stuff. Yeah, right. right. It's, like, it's like Alex Jones. Sometimes you want pretend butt stuff. Wait. So <laughs> sometimes you want pretend butt stuff with Alex Jones. No, not wait. He, not wait. Move on. Moving on. On with the movie. <laughs> now that we've established those things about Heath's sexual preferences, we can move on to the crowds <laughs> exactly. gathering at Times Square. You guys know a lot about me. <laughs> they do. They do. I tested them earlier. We've been doing this There's for a while. Killing it. Um, and of course, they're also they they've taken Arnold to some church basement in fucking the Congo or something, um, so they can stitch him back together. Yeah, I wanted the crazy peasant lady to be like mad in the next bed over, like, oh, okay, he just gets a semi-private room. <laughs> this is fucking bullshit. <laughs> Empire Blue Cross Blue Shield Cross. Get it. <laughs> Way too clever for this movie. Stigmata is a pre-existing condition. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, that's true. That's true. 2,000 years old. Uh, so now he goes to the NORAD security office gun emporium <laughs> armory right. thing. And we have the weirdest, most somber gearing up scene. Look, Arnold Schwarzenegger has done a lot of time to get a rocket launcher scenes. Right? Yeah. He will do many more after this. But there is no music. The camera is really weird. It's just him being like, wow. Wow. Need another. I um, guess I'm going done. to need one of those. <laughs> ow, ow, ow. I caught my finger in the pin. <laughs> ow. So good. Well, also, he's going to fight the devil. Do you think that the problem was you didn't shoot him with big enough bullets? Um, He does think that's the problem because it's he is pulling cartoonishly oversized bullets from a case. <laughs> yes. And they're, they're literally, they're making like slapstick cartoon noises as he grabs them. It's like, boink, boink. It's so weird. Yeah, no, I expected at any minute for one of them to go like, Eddie Valiant, haven't seen you since <laughs> I'm Yeah, right. But so he gets all the guns he can carry without having any bulges in his jacket, apparently. And then they use that magic 1999 New York license plate tracking software that they had back then. Nope. Yeah, he convinces the computer to play tic-tac-toe against itself. And then oh, he knows where I see. all the cars are. <laughs> oh, it makes perfect sense now. <laughs> So, yeah, so now he knows where the devil's car is. So he goes there, and he seems disappointed that they're not in the car. 
Right? Like, he goes to look in the car. He's like, ah, oh, damn. And I'm like, what did you expect? Did they just be hanging out? Uh, 1053, 1050. I am going to fuck you in the back of this car. Do you uh, <laughs> want to listen to some music? Something? <laughs> It's 1999, so literally none of the music is good. I don't blame you if the answer is no. <laughs> but on 104.3. None of it. Great look, fucking music. Classic rock. Fuck you. There's I've, no list, I've listened to your music. music. In- I've listened to your goddamn <laughs> playlist. You have no fucking right to talk about anyone else's music. Um, but luckily... You didn't even really listen to the Creed mix. It was a whole... <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, but luckily for him, uh, Marge shows up. The evil zombie black... Re- resuscitated cop lady is there and so she walks into this abandoned movie theater and arnie follows her you know stealthily clomp 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 i mean they don't even chase like again you can drop out the like elephant walking through the room sound effects in post guys and and as he's following her he gets stopped by a guy whose eyes are sewn shut who's like the satanic homeless guard and he's like ah (laughs) all right go ahead (laughs) Yeah, I can smell that you have some I, evil on you. Wouldn't you just have a guy with unsewn shut eyes? Well, we we had a guy. We had a. It's it's a big thing. It's a big thing. It's a. But then, but then the pizza showed up twenty four minutes late, and I punched through it. So <laughs> honestly, I need to be. I need to be better at communicating in workplace environments, and that's something that I am working on, but not something that I'm ready to talk about. <laughs> Thank you. So, yeah, so he goes in uh, to this, like, again, this one of the many abandoned subway tunnels we have in New York. And he has to, like, like they've, they've lit torches along the way. So he follows them like mm-hmm. he's trying to find a secret room in a Zelda dungeon. Yeah, and indeed, he comes upon one. It's got rock music and Satan chanting. I wanted him so badly to have just accidentally have stumbled on a goth rave. He just starts shooting 16-year-olds who are mad at their dads. They're just like, what's <laughs> Oh, They're in the W next door, asshole. <laughs> all right. So, yeah, so it, so he, he sneaks into the big Satanist meeting where they're all chanting. And, of course, he's got to, like, you know, he's like me trying to sing along to songs or whatever. He's like, Chat, uh, <laughs> But the best part of this is we get a really quick shot of Gabriel Byrne. Now, I'm convinced Gabriel Byrne just stopped acting for a second, didn't know they were going to use the footage because Satan looks super duper bored by the by the satanic service like like his mom is gonna nudge him with her elbow and be like you can fuck her in a second <laughs> okay well now and and Why i will say come here again gen- <laughs> again generous lover here the devil is gonna rape her but that's no reason to skip the foreplay oh uh, well, he's also very insistent upon consent here he's like hey you all cool with this like i'd I didn't know how many people were going to show up, but <laughs> like, I just want to make sure you're all right. <laughs> I was really hoping Satan couldn't get hard right away. And they had like a little argument about that. That would have been fun. <laughs> it's a big crowd to perform. In you're front putting of. a lot I of pressure that. on me. Yeah. I feel like, you know, if you were just a little gentler <laughs> and less, less teeth. Honestly, we've practiced this in the dreams quite a few times and you were, I'm going to say it younger. <laughs> <laughs> How young? <laughs> I love to. Okay, many so, listeners want to know. So the um, so Marge, the 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 cop, sees Artie and like starts sneaking up on him. But just as she gets to him, he like turns around and shoots her in the head. And the Satanists freak the fuck out. They're like, "Well, we came here for a raping. This murder <laughs> shit is not gonna fly." So and then Artie pulls out his you know his automatic machine gun, like security guards have. I guess, and I guess it's full of silver fucking bullets this time because he shoots the devil with it again and grabs the girl. Which works, kind of. Well, I mean, it knocks him back for a second, yeah. So it doesn't work, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. So he grabs the girl, and um, as he's wandering out, you know, of course, he's surrounded by Satanists or whatever, and the devil's like, you'll never get out. And he's like, "Um, oh, yeah, what if I say pretty please? And then Hockney shows up. And Kevin Pollock's performance here is phenomenal he's like you would never betray me and he's like yeah being on fire is a great negotiation tactic I, don't know how to, I know you got a christmas tree but um we didn't light you on fire um so satan had kevin pollock just like waiting off to the side this whole time 
Yeah, he's like, like okay, now, everyone else just gather up around here, but I might need you to do a reveal. Okay, but why am I in the side well, hallway? Can I just, well, it's a thing. It's a th it'll be dramatic if Arnold shows up. I'll, pl I'll pull you out. But if you were you'll... expecting Arnold to show up, why didn't you just kill him? Because then I wouldn't no, be able to do the reveal. Don't question it. <laughs> I punch people through the head for less than this. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so, but, but Hockney just can't shoot him because... Because they're such good buddies, so the devil sets him on fire with a touch again. At which point, Arnold fires one of those giant, um, you know, the chain reaction rockets that cause dozens of explosions yeah. in all mm -hmm. different places? I do. Ev I but do eventually. Like, right, right, not all at you, once. Yeah, you, like, you get to leave, and then there's like a dozen explosions. Yeah, he fires one yeah. of those guns. Um, and, of course, because there's a huge explosion and they're running away, now all of a sudden there's fire chasing them. But don't worry, they duck around a corner and fool the fire, which goes the <laughs> other direction. I wanted them to poke their head out of one window and the fire pokes its head out of the other <laughs> and then they both poke their head out of the window. <laughs> so, and now they, they run through more third world New York City. He uses... A smaller, well, I, I think it's the same gun, but he sets it to only one much smaller explosion so that he can blow right. his way into a different subway tunnel. Right, yeah. He's got to get mm -hmm. past the rainy alleyway gang, which yes. which was also... So again, Satan was like, all right, so if the Kevin Pollock thing doesn't work, I'm going to have... <laughs> you guys are in like a second level of side hallways. He's going to probably do like a delayed rocket. And then you'll be in the second level and you'll get him there. Yeah, exactly. But now, but I need an even number of people on either side, though. <laughs> Here, okay, I'm going to do it with X's and O's. Let me do it with X's and O's. This will make sense. in front of Judea starts yelling about stuff. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a whiteboard up at the front. Any questions not about the plan? <laughs> not about the plan. Okay. So, yeah, so they hop into a different subway tunnel through their improvised door. And, oh, no, a train. So they duck. You know how you can duck under a subway train. So they do that. Oh, you can't duck under a subway train. Can you not? So many homeless people die. No. I feel like a you just no? die. Yeah, you just none, die. None of them yeah. are deep enough. For no, no. no. Um, so, yeah. So die. if you at home were thinking about trying this, don't. 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 Um, just die. Yeah, just die in a, in a normal way, too. That's not going to fuck up everybody's commute. I mean, that's New York yeah, for you, though, right? Like, everyone track. would be so fucking pissed at you for killing yourself like this. Oh, sick passenger. Really? <laughs> really? <laughs> oh, this is when you have your heart attack. Really? Just eat yeah. more or less bacon, a little more or a little less, and you would have been to your destination. Seems like you could have had that heart attack on the platform, Chubbs. <laughs> so, I mean, when you walked in, I thought, you know, 50-50, this guy's having a heart attack before we get to the next station. Yeah. 20% tips. God damn it. <laughs> so, yeah. Now, luckily for them, of course, this is one of those New York City subway trains that's completely empty from front to back at 11 o'clock on New Year's Eve. <laughs> what? So, the, 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 the conductor stops the train, and, of course, he's the only conductor on this train. Because just the one guy that runs the train. And he picks her up. So they jump in the back of the train. The guy's like, are you okay? Yeah, we're okay because you can lay under trains in this universe. He's like, oh, I had no idea. And then Arnold pulls out his shotgun or his uh, machine gun, mows down the three people chasing him. And he's like, let's move. And the guy's like, yeah, I'm on your side now. You seem <laughs> like a New good York. guy. Sure, man. You're the one with the gun and the demonstrated intent to kill people you don't like. Yeah, let's, let's, let's go to Rockefeller Center. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> And then Arnie and the girl are like, oh, he's gone. What possibly at this juncture would make you think he's gone? <laughs> right? <laughs> yes. Yes. But instead, he punches through the floor of the train to grab at them. Right. And, and then through the ceiling. So, so Satan very clearly, he doesn't just transport onto the train something we know he can do. He's just <laughs> like, ah, all right. Rah! Damn it, I'm trying everything today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but they run. Satan punches his way through the conductor's heart because, you know, fuck that guy. Um, and Arnold decides to, you, you know how they have that lever on the trains that allows you to decouple them as they're in motion? 
<laughs> Such a movie trope, man. They don't even allow cloth seats on the New York subway. <laughs> right. so you think they're going to have a lever that separates the cars? <laughs> You're not allowed to open the doors anymore. They yeah, were like, right. oh, yeah, no. Too, too many people tried to do a split in between cars and their dicks got ripped off by a passing rat. So <laughs> <laughs> no more door permission for you. Also, okay, this is so fucking stupid. Even if that was a real thing, wouldn't you think you would leave yourself in the part of the car or in the part of the train that has like the engine, right? Because like they leave him in the front end of the train, and they and they, and they get in the back of the train, uh, which is kind of dumb. And and then the devil tries to jump out again. I love this movie. The devil tries to jump out of the train there that's still going at mm -hmm. them, but he shoots him with a grenade and. It explodes him? Yeah. Right, and the train in front of them explodes and destroys the tracks. Like, oh, really? Didn't think this one through at all, did you guys? But they, so they run to the back of the train, and they, they, they hold on, like, because they're like, oh, this was cool when Keanu did it in speed with Sandra Bullock. Um, and the train, like, accordion smashes into the other train, but, like, all the way to them. It stops yeah, before it gets to them. Six inches short of them. Yeah. Well, that's why they install the poles so you can hold on to something when this happens. So you're fine. I guess. No, it makes perfect sense now. Yeah. So there's a big explosion, whatever. They run off. Uh, Satan wakes up and now like he's just basically a head and rib bones. Yeah. And he's like, oh, man. But he escapes from Gabriel Byrne's body. Right. Like this is beyond his healing capacity, apparently. Right. So, yeah. And of course, the flashlight Satanists are still chasing him. So they run into a church because we saw how effective that was at holding the devil off before. Also, and this is going to come back a little later. There is a statue uh, in this in this church that is holding a sword. Now, if, if you want to be specific, it is the um, the royal broadsword from Breath of the Wild. And it is apparently <laughs> a sharp enough to impale a human being through the damn chest cavity sword. But they just keep it there, hanging off of a fucking uh, statue pointed down at, like, children's eye level. That seems yeah. like a good idea. That church lock-in went badly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't don't pull him back. Just just leave him there. <laughs> Oof. Shouldn't have found that porno. You okay? You okay? <laughs> you can hit me. You can hit me. <laughs> And of course, and this is at this point, by the way, Arnie movie was ahead, right? Because he because he shot somebody with an explodey gun and said something pithy. But right then, Arnie has a coming to Jesus moment and prays. The Christian best movie. coming to Jesus moment in these movies because he has at least David R. White knows what a coming to Jesus moment is supposed to look like. Arnold is like, I love you, God. <laughs> Did you hear me? Rude. <laughs> Rude. <laughs> okay, this is over. More shooting now, please. Yeah, right. And he's like, all right, I'll put down my rocket launcher. But that's it. I'm keeping these other weapons. But the rocket launcher I'll put down. I, I'm with Jesus now. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> so S Satan God quakes the church a little bit and all the windows explode and all the pews fly around or whatever. And then suddenly... Satan rises from below him, but he's boss villain size now. Yes, I literally wrote as a joke before it happened, if the devil comes down as a giant devil and there's a boss fight, this is a sweet video game. Yeah, right. And then it's exactly what happened. Right, no, I'm writing in my notes, look for a flashing spot, Already Use all your special items. Yeah. But, <laughs> and Use <apparently> Viagra. <laughs> <laughs> so now apparently the devil is a winged naked predator. In case you were wondering what the devil looked like. Mm. And also, he is using his devil powers to put Arnold unprotected on the surface of Mars. Is that where we were just looking for an excuse for the <laughs> grunt growls? <laughs> yeah, he jumps inside his body and does more beating up of the body he's about to be in. Which, again, live and don't learn, devil. Live and don't learn. <laughs> and he he wakes up and he's very clearly like, devilified we're, we're supposed to be fooled by this but he wakes up and it's 11 57 p.m which gives the devil three minutes to impregnate this girl you make that sound like a long time, time why would that be i won't i mean that's plenty 
Time to spare. Pop the champagne. Yeah, right. I for mean, a few rounds. Love it. He's gonna so he's gonna fuck Robin Tunney inside Times Square Church while the ball drops. This is my vision board made into a movie. That is so, <laughs> so impressive. <laughs> Also, okay, how fucking dumb is she? Because Arnold's like, oh, it's okay. You can come out now. And she's like, she's got to know, like, oh, you know, if I wait three minutes, it won't matter. So I'm going to keep well, hiding. Why don't I stay here for three more minutes? No. No. <laughs> we, got, we got places to be. Okay. I don't want to make you late. Yeah. Right. New Year's Eve traffic, right? <laughs> Yeah, but okay, so so he grabs her and she, then she realizes he's actually got the devil in him and he's going to go rape her or whatever. But she's trying to like, like telling him to fight the devil. Like you're in there somewhere, Jericho, fight against the devil. And just as he starts to kiss rape her, the Jesus statue nearby starts to glow. So he starts trying to fight against the devil, which... Looks an awful lot like almost vomiting on the girl you're about to fuck. That's I wrote. Imagine this actress's day having Arnold's face that close to your face. <laughs> and there going, had to be moments where she was just like, "Oh, I, I don't really want to be an actor anymore. I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm, I'm good. I'm good on the actor thing." Yeah, but apparently he's able to hold the devil off for just long enough to tell her to run away, and then. He dives heart first into the angel sword. For no reason. She got away. It's two minutes. <laughs> she has two it's minutes. no minutes. It goes three, two, and then he jumps onto the sword. All he had to do was like, one, happy new year. And the devil would just be in Arnold's body. And Arnold would be like, all right, man, like you can hang out if you want, but we're all going to Chili's. Like, <laughs> it's over. Yes. So and then, of course, Arnie goes to heaven where his wife and daughter are there to meet him. And this is the check mark that puts it over the top for Christian movies. He does go to heaven at the end. Well, we see the wife and daughter and Christine sees them. And I wanted so badly to have her to look away and look back. And Arnie was there like a Jedi appearance, like they're all blue and oh, glowy. Cool. But no, <laughs> they they vanish and they're in heaven with, with Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> Imagine spending eternity with Arnold Schwarzenegger <laughs> and thinking it's heaven. No, that's impossible. I don't want to imagine impossible things to imagine. <laughs> all right. So as we all know, all of these movies take place in the same cinematic universe. And since Arnie dies at the end, we can't get a sequel. But that doesn't mean we can't get a prequel. So I, I ask you to close off of all the characters in all the movies we've ever done. Who would you most like to see him team up with in the buddy cop prequel? Oh, uh, obviously, it's Flyboy, the parkour guy from Leap. Oh, that would be great one, answer. Watch Arnold do some parkour <laughs> copping. Oh, that'd be great. Oh, um, I'm actually gonna keep the universe consistent, and I'm gonna say he teams up with Eyes Sewn Shut guy. Oh, <laughs> huh? Then no, there's a lot of like see no evil, hear no evil comedy that could be going on there. I guess. Yeah, it. there's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. And well, that's going to do it for our review of End of Days. That's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to rope you back in for next week. So, Eli, tell us what's on deck. Heaven bound. Now, that's more like it, dude. That's more <laughs> like it. Holy shit. We get the fucking DJ from Resurrection of Gavin Stone for a whole movie. I'm so in. Yeah, I am not. I. I I may or may not have IMDb'd this gentleman and been like, oh, he's in another Christian movie. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, yeah, that's pretty much. God, Jesus, we're not going to have. I wouldn't even have to watch the movie, right? I could just probably write two hours of material on this guy's physical appearance and show up and let you guys tell me what happened. I think I'm going to do or that. Maybe Arnold could throw him through a table. I'm just I'm just throwing out <laughs> ideas. Here. I'm just throwing out ideas. <laughs> So with all that to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 90 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to all the Patreon donors that help make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per-episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn early access to an ad-free version of every episode. You can also help us a ton by leaving us a five-star review on iTunes and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Atheist and The Skeptocrat, available on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, and wherever else podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of P. 
Andrew Torres. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slotnick of Evil Drafts on Mars. All of the music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick, I'm No Illusions, promising to work hard to earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with a Breakfast Club close. Christine tried to get health insurance, but demonic snake blood is now a pre-existing condition. Fucking GOP. Hockney burned in hell for one with 300 zeros years and then some. In the year 2,999, Satan just matched with Christine on Tinder. It was, like, way easier. I guess I'll have to cut that. I thought it was funny. <laughs> <laughs> no, if nobody, Sorry, I was, if I nobody was so laughs, then everybody's going to think I was serious about that. You guys are like, yeah, she I is was, still pretty pissed about that. I was away from my mug because I was taking a drink break and I thought I would make it back in time. But the joke was shorter, so I was just like, oh no, oh no. <laughs> the preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2017. All rights reserved. Welcome to Mafia, a new podcast telling stories of America's criminal underworld. Gotti assumed the position of head of the Gambino family. And using the name Donnie Brasco, I was able to infiltrate the uh, Bonanno uh, crime family in New York City. Bugsy Siegel is an American mob legend. One man changed the whole texture and landscape of crime in America. Listen to Mafia every Wednesday on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your favorite shows.